Hi everybody, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from The Hive on Monday, August 1st. And we are going to be doing the July Ink Paper Scissors class with you guys tonight. Um, we had to do a little rearranging because I went camping this past weekend and I was originally, I think, gonna do this class on Thursday and then Paper Pumpkin was gonna be tonight, but I swip, switched it around with Kelly so that, um, that I could go camping on Thursday night. <laughs> I didn't think originally in the beginning that I was gonna be going till Friday morning. Hi, Darcy Dutton. And then it switched around that we were leaving Thursday. So hi, Jennifer Jones and Tammy Steckling. So, <laughs> so we did a little switcherooing. Um, and so if you miss the paper pumpkin with Kelly on Thursday night, just know that that video is always out there. Hi, Corinne, thanks for sharing, I appreciate it. So the camping trip was successful. Hi, Linda Hall. Uh, we, um, <laughs> now that I know what we did, I can tell you what we did. <laughs> oh, um, so hi, Deb Norman and Karen Carstey. Uh, so I knew we were going on the Wisconsin River. Hi, Sherry Stewart um, and Mary Ellen Ryan, but I didn't know exactly where we were starting or I wasn't paying too close of attention. Hi, Cindy Runtree. <laughs> I was just going with the flow, right? Hi, Karen Wetstein. So, <laughs> no pun intended, going with the flow over the river. <laughs> I get it. Hi, Denise. Uh, so we started in Sauk City, Wisconsin. Hi, Mary Lemke, which is, um, where is it in relation? It's like Western Wisconsin a little bit. So um, hi, Tara Stay. Hope you're doing good, girl. Hi, Diane Bogenhagen and Sandy Wicklander and Cindy Miller. Um, hi, Denise Ray. Uh, hi, Melody Miller. So we started in Sauk City, and we dropped the canoe. I, Tyler and I went on a canoe. Hi, Barb Johnson and Bernadette. Hi, Diane Marie. Um, oh, <laughs> there's a, two Diane Marie's. <laughs> Unless Diane Marie, you're both of them. <laughs> and then it just popped in twice. Hi, Sue Thomas and Julie Bierschbach. So we dropped it in at Sock City. So my two friends, Don and Tiffany, they took their kayaks and Tyler and I went in the canoe. And we did about 44 miles. Hi, Donna and Patsy and Lynn. Um, it's, <laughs> I went AWOL for a while. I sure did. Hi, Karen Steg. Um, I... Basically had my play, my phone in airplane mode almost the entire time uh, because there was very little recession, reception and I wasn't looking at it anyways because I was on a canoe and I did not want to drop it in the water. But I did take it out to take pictures and I did get some sun, Mary. That is a true statement. Definitely wore sunscreen, SPF 50 over everything the entire time. Um, <laughs> Even got it all up in the ears and Tyler kept picking it out of my ears, but I'm like, well, I'd rather have white crusties in my ear from sunscreen than having red ears and them burning. So uh, he just treated, <laughs> he just kept picking on me because I had white um, sunscreen in my ears. Hi, Terry from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Woohoo. Hi, Faye Godby and Mary Jean. Um, <laughs> the current, I hope. <laughs> yes. Um, um, so we started in Sauk City. We did 10 miles. 10 miles, 10 miles and 12 miles maybe. Like it was about 42 miles. And we camped on the islands um, and we didn't have to make any reservations. Um, and we could just set up our tents. And because the islands are in the middle of the Wisconsin rivers, they're owned by the state uh, and not, I guess, the DNR. So you can't stay on the shorelines, but you can stay on the islands. And so we just kind of hold up on a little island and we forged for firewood. I shouldn't say we, I didn't. Tyler and Tiffany love to build fires. And so they collected all the wood. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Sherry Martin. Um, so I just got to sit back and relax and I cooked food for Tyler. We did a lot of um, har uh, boiling water and having dry packed meals. Hi, Chris Dudarenke and Pat Detlefson. Um, hi, Alice Ampsell and Rory Sears from upstate New York. Uh, so we ended up ending at Gotham, uh, Wisconsin, which was down the Wisconsin River. Uh, we had really great weather, you guys. It was cl um, cloudy, like partly cloudy, mostly cloudy, um, but sunny. And so um, it was nice because it wasn't all sun and that would have been a scorcher and we would not have been too happy. <laughs> so, but yes, so you guys needless to say, um, if you got emails from me, <laughs> you were of the select few that I was able to respond back to quickly. Hi, Laura Sullivan. Um, but generally I left my phone in airplane mode, but there was a little downtime every now and then where I like, I snuck on <laughs> and checked some things. But all in all, just know I'm still getting through my emails. Uh, today, I, we have, we're prepping kits tomorrow, so I cut up kits for 
let's say 400 cards maybe today. Uh, so that was what I did in the afternoon. And I did see the chiropractor. Hi, Sharon. So I'm so excited that I had made that appointment and um, pop, pop, crack, crack. Oh, what a relief it is, is what I tease him <laughs> because it's like um, Alka-Seltzer makes you feel better and my chiropractor always makes me feel better. So yeah, so I did that. Hi, Judy Sullivan. Ooh, two, two Sullivans, Laura and Judy. I love it. Um, hi, Linda Grady. Thanks. Um, yeah, so it was a great trip, you guys. Uh, definitely enjoyed our company with our friends and just um, some downtime. It was really weird. Um, hi, Christine Domino and Elaine Rebeck. It was weird uh, being removed more than anything. Like when I went to Utah last month, you guys I really stayed connected almost the entire time it seemed um, maybe a little bit downtime but this time I really kind of shut it off starting noon on Thursday and <laughs> until like about this morning <laughs> so oh so thanks Randy Schultz so it was a great trip you guys um so Tyler always loves camping and so if I can do something that he enjoys then that makes me happy because it makes him happy <laughs> so but so yes needless to say some of you still owe some responses I owe you some responses so I'm getting to that um hi Cheryl Thomas from Ohio so uh, a couple things I want to go over with you uh what we're going to do after class is you guys can see the board here is full <laughs> oh my goodness board number five is full hi Terry Beeler um so we're going to do the drawing for celebration board number four I'm sorry, five. I was thinking Amy Ponce was the winner for four. I know Jody Storman won one, and Kathy King won one, and who was my other gal? Um, oh, Shirley Malarkey won one. So, um, so I'm looking to get um, number five for the winner. So we're going to do that after class. I also did the drawing for the top fan. So I'll announce those winners. We're going to do a live drawing for the class card challenge and the monthly creative challenge. Woohoo! Um, I also have my Be Happy Stampers team challenge. So we're going to do the drawing for that. So lots of stuff and the monthly cards for July. You guys, I have the winners drawn for that. So whew, so much stuff. Um, I do want to do a little shout out to um, do one final call. Hi, Becky Gandolfo and Joyce Cohen and Marsha Lynn and Amy Ponce. <laughs> Woo! Um, lots of people just rolled in. So um, scavenger hunt. I am going to go through this one more time. Uh, I think five of them came in over the weekend. Hi, Shannon Kemp. And first time watching one of your videos. Woohoo, Joyce, I'm so happy you caught me live. Um, so I did get like five of them in throughout the weekend. So I think I got them printed. I have to send them off to my gal. Um, and then I picked them up this afternoon. So I'm going to go quickly through the names. And I'll try to read them very um, slow. But if you did send in a scavenger hunt and you haven't given it to me yet, um, or I should say if you gave it to me and I didn't read off your name, then resend it to me. Uh, the scavenger hunts were due yesterday because yesterday was July 31st. So I'm going to read them off real quick just to make sure I have them all before I grade them all because I like to grade them all at once. So really quickly, we have Mary Lemke, Deb Norman, Susan Mick. Nealis or McNellis, Karen Cotton. This is me and the teacher in me coming out. Michelle Sinto or Philly Sinto, Carmen Melendez. Hi, Judy Sharp. Not calling off your name, but just saying hi. <laughs> uh, Sandra Toller, Mary Carls, Anna Rebidu, Barbara Johnson, Karen Wettstein, Debbie Schultz. That's Debbie with the buzzy at work email. Um, Christina Bernards. Um, Corinne Bouvia, Laura Wood, Judy Bobo, Jean Maxwell, and Debbie Schultz with the DT at the end. So those are who I have. Now, De Deanna Stell, I never answered your question about the stars question. I guess I would say answer it to the best of what you think, the, what they look like, and get your scavenger hunt turned in. Because I didn't respond to your email before the 31st or your text message asking about stars and snowflakes. And so I would say just take your best guess and just get it to me today if possible so that I can make sure to include you. So um, so that's um, scavenger hunts. If you guys aren't certain what the scavenger hunt is because you're watching me for the first time, with every new catalog, I do a little question and answer. And I do a, a, whoever gets the most right gets a gift certificate from me uh, for product out of the Stampin' Up! catalog. And it's all questions that are out of the new catalog. So, um, so that was for the holiday mini catalog. And again, if I didn't read off your name, please get it back to me. Um, hi, Yvonne Cooper from Florida. Hi, Carmen Melendez. Um, hi, Diane Crunk from Birmingham, Washington. So scavenger hunt, if you didn't hear your name, but you sent it in to me, resend it to me. So there's that. Um, 
they added new celebration items. So um, for, for celebration right now, hi, Barbara Gabby. Um, so celebration is going now through August 31st. Uh, Hi, Cindy Bassett from hot New Hampshire. Uh, so there, there's a select number of items that you can get for free with a $50 or $100 order um, during the months of July and August. And that's called Celebration. They've been doing it for probably, if I had to guess, 20 years. I mean, I can distinctly remember back at least 15 years, but um, long time, long, long time. And um, on top of it with a 50 or $100 order, that's how you get your name on the board with me. And if it's ordered through me. Uh, so... They ran out of some things, you guys. Uh, they ran out of those pool party and soft sea foam note cards and envelopes. They are not getting more stock in. I understand they also ran out of the tree lots dies. They are not getting more stock in. Um, they are currently out of, um, hi Doris Monson, they are currently out of the Wonderful World um, $100 gift. So it was a pack of designer paper and a stamp set. What they told me today is those are gonna be coming back in stock. They needed it to replenish their inventory. So it's turned off at the moment. If you're really waiting for it, you know, give it a week or two, they said. Um, hi, Carla Lake and Deb Fitzgerald. Um, hi, Brenda Hodnett. Uh, so the other thing is the Rings of Love designer series paper. They told me that is turned off at the moment, but um, they will be getting more next week. <clears throat> they make the paper and the designer, the designer series paper and the stamp sets here in the United States, and they can reproduce more or create more inventory. Whereas the other two things, um, because of what it is and where they source them from, they couldn't get a replenishment that would arrive in time. So, so just a couple things there about what's currently being offered. But um, there are, I don't know, uh, maybe nine different things. And I saw the email come in over the weekend. If I'm not mistaken, there's like the gingham embossing folder, um, the timber embossing folder, ooh, um, the daffodil daydream dies, um, the aspen tree dies. There's like nine things. Hi, Melanie Foy uh, from Misty Rhinelander. Uh, there's about nine things that they added. And the nine things either come out of the annual catalog or the holiday catalog that you can buy them, but um, they're offering them as extras in case, um, you know, the selection is like a little bit less than what it was in the beginning of celebration. So to keep celebration going strong, they added these nine. And you have to use the, the, co the host code that is for the free item. Um, Oh, wow, Karen. Okay, so Karen Wetstein just commented that the wonderful world and the tree rung, tree ring, the trees of ring, whatever DSP is back in stock. Um, when I looked last night to place my order, it was still out. And then when I talked to them today, they said it would be next week. So here's the thing. Those two things, regardless, will be back in stock if they're not already at some point in the near future. Um, so if you're holding out for them, maybe you want to hold out a little bit longer. Oh, yep, D Doris Monson just confirmed it. So those are back in stock. Woohoo! takes the team, you guys. You guys are awesome to let everybody know that. Hi, Jody Sturman and Latokia Trigg. Okay, so I can't remember exactly everything, but I am going to be writing up my August newsletter. I promise it will be out very soon um, this week. And in that newsletter, it will um, have a picture of all the different things and will have those codes. So, um, and if you're placing an online order, it'll give you those options that you can just select them and add them to your cart. And this starts tomorrow, you guys, not today. I think it said August 2nd through the 31st uh, that you can add those. So if you go and place an order tonight, those things aren't there. But you start the order tomorrow, um, they'll be available starting tomorrow. So yeah, it's awesome that they added new things. I, I, don't, I know they used to do that in the past when Celebration ran three months long. Um, they'd add some stuff halfway through, but I don't think they did that the last one or two times. So that I can remember, but <laughs> maybe they did and I just don't remember. Hi, Linda Kester. Okay, so that's that. But... The other thing is that, um, so good question, Deb Fitzgerald. And there's a couple other people that said they were new to watching me tonight. Hi, Kay Weir. There is, if you go to my website, I'm going to flip the camera down and I'm going to zoom in and <laughs> let's get it right there. If you see that right there, you see it says cardsbychrisb.com. That's my website. Okay, let's zoom that back out. Um, so that's my website, cardsbychrisb.com. The easiest way to go about that is go to like my calendar of events. So click on events or click on about me or click on any link in there. And on the if you're on a computer or a tablet, it's a bigger screen. Uh, so what you can do is um, you'll see it on the right. There's a picture of me and underneath it says to subscribe to my um, email list or my subscriber list, enter your email address. 
and you hit submit, and then you're going to get an email asking you to confirm your email address. And then I'll see it come through, and I'll tag you to get emails from you, from me. Um, so that's one way, um, and that's the easiest way. Otherwise, just send me an email, and I can manually add you to the list as well. And my email address is going to be underneath... Um, my name here um, and above that website when I put the camera back down. Hi, Marilyn Skorker. Hi, Don Gursky. So, but yes, you guys, um, for that newsletter, I send out a newsletter monthly, but then I also send emails about specials and promotions and my upcoming classes. I send reminders about them. And then I also send thank yous. So, um, hi, Sharon Smith. The website is cardsbycrispy.com. And when I flip the camera down, you guys will be able to see that. So um, the other thing that I'll be including, oh, you're very welcome, Deb. Including in that newsletter uh, is information about <laughs> um, new dyes that they are putting out there into the world for us um, that accompany stamp sets that don't have dyes at the moment. So I think there's six dyes that are being added. And I believe, I haven't read all the details yet, so don't quote me. And maybe somebody who has read the details, that's a demonstrator, could help me out. Um, but I believe they added six dies, and you can buy the dies separately, or you can buy them as a bundle. So, hi, Ethel King and Kathy Showalter. So, there's, let's say, Yeti to the party, and that's in the mini catalog. You can buy the stamp set, but they're adding dies for it, and so you can buy it as a bundle now, or you can buy the dies separately. I think Apple Harvest is another one. And if anybody saw the other ones listed, you can maybe write them in the comments for me um, so I can read them off to everybody. I guess I didn't investigate that before I went live. I just got the email this morning and I saw that. Um, so I don't know, Diane, if you're available to, to look up the other four, I know we talked about it at the Summer Creative Escape. I just can't remember the other four that was three weeks ago. <laughs> Hi, Jean Turbeligger. So we'll try to call those out so you guys can see it. But just know that will also be included in my newsletter that I send out this week. So there we go. That's a lot about a little bit of what we got going on. Um, so I just wanted to make sure to call that out to you guys to be watching for that. Hi, Sharon Davis. Um, you betcha. So new items and also new... Um, new items for celebration, and new bundle die set stuff going on. So, um, hi, Andy Aquisto. All right, so are you guys ready? Um, um, oh, yes, the birthday piggy. Okay, yes, Cheryl Stewart just said it. There's a, a piggy set. This birthday piggy is the name, we think, um, and it is in the annual catalog. So that's one that will now have dies. Um, that's, so that's three of them, Apple Harvest, the Yeti one, and then the piggy one. Um, hi, Lisa Savage. So... All right, you guys, we're going to do roll call here. I always like to say hi to those people that registered for this class. Um, I do have a few kits left for tonight's class in case anybody would still like to get in. Sue Thomas, does it not start in September or was that something different? Oh, okay. So here's a little caveat to that. I think that demonstrators can pre-order in August and then customers can purchase them starting in September. Oh, Karen Westside, I got it here. Trimming the tree, waterfall canyon, fresh cut flowers. Um, hi, Stacy Burns. So those are three more of them. And Sue Thomas, it might be that it starts for customers in September and demonstrators in August. And I think it might start tomorrow um, for demonstrators. So like I could go in, or if you are a, a discount shopper or a demonstrator with Stampin' Up!, um, the waterfall set. Yep. So I think we're missing one more. So fresh cut flowers, trimming the tree, waterfall canyon, and piggy one, apple harvest, and then there was a sixth one. And Karen Wetsign just confirmed that it starts tomorrow for demo pre-order and um, customers in September. So sad face that just came through with Mr. Grumpy Pants just came through. <laughs> I know. If you want to pre-order and buy things early, you are more than welcome to sign up to be a discount shopper or uh, um, however you want to call it, but be on the Be Happy Stampers team and join my team because then you can order early, all that fun stuff early. So yeah, so everybody's, hi, France, Pembleton. Pl pl I just, <laughs> I thought it was Pembleton, but it's Plamunden. <laughs> I saw lots of letters and I reread it really fast. So, okay. Yaddy to the party. Okay, so there might be a sixth one that I'm thinking in my head that it still might be there. But yeah, so anybody who is interested in becoming a discount shopper or a demonstrator, like it's the same, signing up with Stampin' Up! And you're looking for an awesome demonstrator, I would love to be that awesome demonstrator to support you. So 
Okay, roll call, you guys. Big class tonight. Um, hi, Nicole Legault. Um, we have 48 signed up, which means I have eight kits left. And um, there might be, I'm just hopeful I didn't miss anybody because I know I missed um, Susan. Uh, oh, I had computer issues and so my file didn't save. So we missed signing up Susan in my spreadsheet and she caught it. So I was able to send her kits out today and that was great. But in case somebody signed up for this class and you haven't gotten your kits yet um, and you've checked the tracking, that like you haven't gotten tracking, then you reach out to me ASAP. But I think I'm safe to say I probably have six sets of this class left for tonight in case um, you're interested. Um, oh, the other three. So we've said them all then. Okay, so Apple Harvest, Yeti the Party, and Birthday Piggy. I can't count. So there are six. <laughs> we've listed them a few times, so we're good to go. All right, so first is Deanna Stell, and then Sandy Wicklander, Sherry Martin, Lynn Beasley, Mary Carls, Faye Godby, Jennifer Jones, Julie Bierschbach, Jeannie Parker, Kathy King, Nancy Stormer, Judy Immel. Hi, Anna Rabidou. Like, uh, just got my mail kit in the 20 minutes. Woohoo! Hilly just got hers. Awesome. Okay, that I'm gonna start back with Kathy King, Nancy Stormer, Judy Immel, Diane Bogenhagen, Jill Butzin, Carmen Melendez, Lila Erickson. Jean Terwilliger, Cheryl Thomas, Christina Heiser, Karen Wettstein, Elaine Rebeck, Chris Dudarenki, Hildenel Vilchez, Tammy Steckling, Jody Storman, Laura Sullivan, Barbara Godby, Barb Johnson, Jamie Tafoya, Doris Munson, Carla Lake, Deb, Ram, Deb Ryan, Karen Cotton, Helen Chase, Marsha Dean, Becky Rohrer, Shirley Malarkey, Lori P., Pat Detlitson, Kate Reynolds, Holly Gentry, Joyce Corneck, Sue Spiegner, Pat Thomas, Stacy Warner, Kim Cronauer, Vera Anderson, and Susan Healy Cribs. Whoo, you guys, we're gonna rock this class tonight. <laughs> we have 48 that are gonna either be making their kits with me or potentially make them after. Um, for those of you that are newer to doing classes with me, like Susan and Vera, um, the advice that my gals tell me when they take classes with me is <sighs> just don't get overwhelmed and don't think you have to keep up. Um, I do this as a class so that the replay is always available. So I do it as a Facebook Live class. You can always catch the replay. A lot of th times they say that they watch it while they're working on other things and hear me uh, and then watch me while I'm doing the cards so they know how to make them after. Um, it's always um, hard to keep up with me, especially if you haven't done your stamping or you haven't done anything to prepare and you're just pulling out your kit with me. Um, I've made these cards, I've designed them so I know what's going into them and I work a relatively faster speed <laughs> than the average bear. So, um, so don't ever feel pressure that you have to keep up with me and don't feel like you don't I succeed if you don't. Um, that's why the replay's there. You have a PDF tutorial. You guys, I, I emailed the PDF tutorial Wednesday night before I left. Uh, so all of you should have it of the 48, should have the PDF tutorial in your inboxes. Um, and speaking of PDF tutorials, I um, have the class on Thursday night, which is the Kellogg launch party class, you guys. I haven't written that one yet. <laughs> I'm writing it tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. But before my mom gets here at 10, my plan is to have it done and emailed to you guys. And so just know today was a little hectic day and um, didn't get it written as fast as I wanted to. Hi, Patrice. Okay, so lots of you guys are here with me for the class and that's awesome. So this is the ink, paper, scissors class. Um, I've been doing this one for over a year. This is my fee-based class where you can only get this by paying the fee and that's because it includes product. Um, it includes a quarter pack of paper it includes a roll of ribbon and um, the embellishments. And the ribbon and the embellishments are used on the four cards. And uh, one of the things that I always love to remind people is that Julie Bierschbach once told me that what she likes to do is she likes to, before she gets started, she likes to cut extra bases and mats um, so that she can make multiples of the same design. So let's say she cut for three more sets. So she'll make 16 cards and it uses up a lot of the embellishments, a lot of the ribbon, and so, um, and then she gets 16 cards at the end, and she gives them away as gifts or sells them, or, um, you know, has a purpose for them. Um, if you don't need that many cards, though, so you don't have to think like that, but it's just an idea for those that like 
the you have the extra designer series paper um, you've got uh, extra embellishments and ribbon it might be cool just to, to do that so ink paper scissors um, <laughs> is a, a wash in beauty so that's the name of the suite um, I'm gonna grab the book down so that you guys can see where it is in the catalog so here as I have this flip down you guys will be able to see my information my current host code is always on my website this one's still open um, at the moment, but I do have a new one listed on my website. So in case anybody um, is confused by the two, um, no worries, they're both good. Um, hi, Marsha Kulbert. Okay, so if you go into the annual catalog, it's called A Wash in Beauty. Oh, Elaine, I do four extras of each card. Yay, awesome. So A Wash in Beauty is on pages 66 to 67. The suite is called A Wash in Beauty, while the bundle is called True Beauty, which is crazy. <laughs> one's at the beginning of the alphabet, and this one's at the end of the alphabet, so they confuse me. Hi, Carol Schmidt. Um, but they include the stamp set and the dies, and the dies are so cool. And I'll be honest, I left my dies upstairs, but the dies have all of these um, flower pieces and then some sprigs foliage and then this diamond thing and I'll show you what it actually looks like die cut um, the designer series paper is part of this as well as these iridescent pearls and then I threw in for this one which matched it really nice is the organdy ribbon it's got little sparkles in it and there's different like it looks like cotton candy colors to me like pinks and blues and so that's where the product comes from and so in case you're wondering what do you get in this kit with me you get a package that looks like this and i have naughty nancy's here <laughs> so naughty nancy lets me borrow hers when she takes the class um you get a little slip that has the name of the class um, and your name on it it comes with four card kits and then it has the designer series paper, a quarter pack. It has a full roll of the ribbon and it has a full package of the, the embellishment. And this time it's iridescent pearls. So you guys wanna pay close attention <clears throat> while I have it to this top piece. I made sure everybody's top piece of designer paper included this one, which is the flower that we use on one of the cards. So this class is a little bit different too because I actually cut paper with you and show you. So your card kits, I tricked. <laughs> One time I tricked Kathy King. Oh, she felt bad for asking, but I laugh about it with her. Um, she's like, none of the designer paper was in the kits. I'm like, well, that's because it's in your pack of, pa um, the designer series papers in this pack. So you guys, when I do these card kits, they're different than all my other card kits. When I do product-based classes like this, your card kits will have all of the pieces that you need like this, but they won't have the designer paper in them. So the first thing that I do for this class is we go through and we cut the paper together as a group so that you can insert it into the envelope. And Naughty Nancy lets me use hers, so I, because I always kit my stuff up ahead um, and I use for my big packs of paper. So we're going to do that first as a group. <clears throat> so, and I don't want to lose these things from her. So we're going to put these back in here and make a little room. So for those of you, this might be something that you would want to do with me if you did this class so that we can do this at the same time. So if you look at these cards, <clears throat> there's a few different pieces of designer paper. And I think we'll start with this. This is my, this is my mom calls this the gourmet card. So it opens like that and it opens like that. And so um, just had to use some extra designer series paper on that inside. So we're gonna start with this one, you guys. So as I talked about this top piece of paper right here, it's got that green on the back. What you can do, let's see here. I graduated. So on this first one, when you have a moment, you do want to fussy cut this out. I'm not doing fussy and cutting for Nancy. <laughs> Sorry, Nancy, if you're watching, but I am going to get it ready and put it in your envelope for you so that you have it set. So I love, um, hi, Donna Simmer coming in late from Vancouver, Canada. Um, I like to um, pull out the pieces so that you guys can put them in with the envelopes, but just know I've already in my kit down here, I've already die cut mine out. So when you have a moment and some downtime, you are gonna wanna just cut around and um, 
get it so it's fine tuned and cut out very nicely. So that's it for this one piece. And I promise your t this is the second piece that you have doesn't have a full flower like that. So you're going to have to make sure you grab it from this top one, All right? You can always save um, this other paper for something else. You could even use these portions of flowers and um, mask them off like it's coming off the edge of the paper or the card to use some of those or create a bouquet and use those because they're still good. Um, they just have a, a straight edge on one side. So that's it for these, this color combination. Now, this next one is the pretty one. This is my favorite print out of this whole pack. And that, whoa, that one is what we used on the inside. And that is a five by three and three quarters. So I have all the measurements, you guys, in the PDF tutorial for those that took the class with me. So that's five by three and three quarters. And there is direction to this. We want it five this way and three and three quarters wide. So what you're going to do is you can have two choices here. You either cut off, <coughs> you cut off the top. Hi, Marsha Long from Texas. Um, I'm glad that you're watching. Um, we'll be in Van for the short time, hoping for nice weather. Hi, Joanna Besting. So you can either cut the top off and then the side, or you can cut this off and then the top. So I guess what I'm going to do is go three and three quarter here. Oh, this is a good thought too. Which flowers do you want, guys? Hi, Jeannie Parker. Do you want this beautiful Mary Merlot flower or do you want this flower? So pick which flowers you want. And I'm going to go for this one over here for Nancy because I love that dark Mary Merlot. So you're going to cut it at three and three quarters. <clears throat> and then you have this pink left. Um, the pink, you guys, would fit the envelope flap. <clears throat> so you could always glue it on there and then cut it so that it fits. That is the perfect size for the envelope flap. Okay, just a thought in case you want to use it for that. <coughs> okay, so because I don't think I, well, I did use it over here on this card. So, but you have a second piece that you can always pull from. <coughs> so that was three and three quarters by five. And so when you cut this at five, it's going to go right up to that green one. Um, I'd like one of, oh yes, Latokia. I can make sure you get one of these. Yay. Perfect. Okay, I got, already got a post-it note for it. <clears throat> so, um, you could always trim off a little from the bottom here if you wanted to see a little more white. Completely up to you. I cut mine really close to the top here. So, at five inches. Um, oh, it's too close. Too close for comfort. So, I'm going to bring it down. What's on the back side? Oh, you know what, you guys? Da -da -da. I'm so excited. Wait, I just remembered something. So, do you see this little strip right here? On this other card, it is, um, I believe, five ace. It's five ace by, <laughs> you'd think I'd have my, I should have my measurements, three and three ace. Five, <clears throat> three, okay. That needs to come off this little piece right here, okay? Then you can still use that for your envelope flap. <clears throat> so that means what I'm going to do is cut that at three quarters. So watch this. So this is six inches. So we're gonna bring it back three quarters of an inch. Now that little strip is gonna be used on this card. And then I need this to be at <clears throat> five. And now I'm gonna take it from the back bottom side here and leave a little bit of white at the top. <clears throat> I hope you guys caught what I just did there. When I was designing this card, I had this scrap and it ended up over on that card. <clears throat> so now this piece is the one that goes here. So, and again, it's five by three and three quarters. So now you've got this piece and you've got your flower. If you want to use this for your envelope, you are more than welcome to. And what I would do is grab that card kit, and I think it's this one, and just slip it in your card kit so that you are ready for it when the time comes. Okay, so that one's done. So let's put that one there. All right, so then we're done with these two pieces. <clears throat> so let's do this card next. So we had said it was three quarters by, I can't remember now, <laughs> um, it was three and three eighths. So now what you're going to do is you already have this at a quarter. You're very welcome, Latokia. Cut this at three and three eighths, okay? Just like that, all right? So 
do with this what you want. Um, it's a little small to do anything with in my mind, but you might find a purpose for it. So keep it or throw it, whatever you want. But so this one is here, right? And now we got to find the balmy blue piece. So that is in this pack. So let's look for that. There it is. So it's the two down here. How do you do the fold? Well, we'll get to that in a bit, Marsha. Um, when we design the, when I go through making the card, you'll see that. <coughs> All right, so you don't need the second sheet. So let's set that over there. And we are going to cut this. And I believe this one is also, what is this? Uh, four and three quarters by um, three and a half. So there's a, di there's a pattern to this, you guys. It's the flowers are going this way. So we had said this was four and three quarters. So I'm going to cut four and three quarters <clears throat> that way by three and a half. Um, and if you guys notice, there's a wash to this. Do you like it darker? Do you like it lighter? Pick what you want. Um, it's up to you. And so that was at three and a half. I'm going to go with a little bit darker for Nancy so that it shows off a little bit more. All right. Um, hi, Deanna Stell. All right. So that was three and a half. So that's this piece right here. And then we already cut the pink piece there. So now find that one. This is gonna be really hard guys because all of them are about the same color. They all are Mary Merlot bases. So, but find the one um, and then stick that one in there and that's done then. <clears throat> so next card that we'll do must be <clears throat> that one. So let's find that piece here. And it's this guy right there. And um, we don't use the one piece, so you guys can create more with that. But this is the piece that goes here. And this one is three, no, what is it? It's two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut <clears throat> two and three quarters, and there's direction to this in my mind. I feel like more of it's going this way versus that to me looks like it's going that way. So I'm gonna make sure I cut two and three quarters off this side. And then that's extra. And then this would be five and a quarter, like that. Okay, thanks for sharing, Sue Sorrell. Hi, Deborah Butt. <clears throat> so this piece right here, you guys, would make a great piece to put on your flap of your envelope. Um, if you would, like the flowery patterns going this way, but you could also have that pattern on the outside, which would be really pretty. So this is extra though, if you wanna do something like that. And that's it for designer paper on this one. So let's find this one. And that one has the square in it. And we'll slip this in here. So this card also, if you do not have this stamp set, this um, flower part here, you could use some of these from this paper right here, I believe. So we'll, I'll show you that in a second. But let's go to this last one here. <clears throat> so there's two pieces here. Uh, thanks for sharing, Sandy Wicklander. Thanks, Jeannie Parker. I appreciate you sharing too. So there's two pieces here. Um, oh, Karen Wetstein, good call. So Karen Wetstein is my grammar girl um, and direction girl. <laughs> um, so she has helped me fix a couple things in the past and um, I appreciate that. So for those of you who took this class with me, I'm gonna update the PDF and I'll send you out a new one with the correct version of that direction. <laughs> okay, I got it, Karen, thank you so much. All right, so this last one, there's a couple pieces left. So we're gonna look at this one right here. And I wonder if that one is, that one's two and a half by five and a quarter. I wonder, Karen, if that one's wrong too. Um, so two and a half, and again, there's direction to the paper. So I wanna make sure I cut it the right orientation. So that's two and a half. So you want to use that on the envelope? You could. I mean, it might be going that way, but that's always an option. So two and a half by five and a quarter, and I'm going to cut it off of that side. So that is extra, and that's the piece that goes there. But there's also that little strip of pink that's right there. And I pulled that from this last piece here. <clears throat> so before you cut that little strip, you can decide... Do you want to use any of this stuff? Because in this one right here, we're going to stamp a blushing bride sprig, but a balmy blue one wouldn't look bad in there. Um, and you could always cut 
this leaf and put that here. And you could use, um, depending on where, what flower heads you got, there's a flower head right there that you could put. So if you don't necessarily have the stamps for this and you want it to look like this, same with this card. You have, hopefully, <laughs> two stems. You could cut that out and just put that right on here. And then you could use that flower head and that flower head on each of these two cards just to use. So if that's the case and you end up doing that, you just want to um, make sure you cut this little strip out from an, a non-obvious spot. So this is three and three quarters by three quarters. So <clears throat> I don't want to cut Nancy's stem. Um, so I'm looking at right here, this section right here might be good to take out um, or even right here because that flower is kind of cut off. So I'm going to be strategic about where I cut that from, if you guys catch my drift. And let's see how I want to do this. So <clears throat> I said three and three quarters, and I want to take that section out. So, so one, two, three and three quarters. So I'm trying to do this. Let's do it. I'm running out of room. Hang on. So we're going to do three and three quarters, th three quarters by, and then it's one, two, three. And I'm going to just use my guide here. I might go into that pink flower, but it'll be okay. It's right there. So I'm only taking a little wedge out. <clears throat> so now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to flip it this way. Three and three quarters there. So hi, Sharon, Sherry Berry. Hmm? Hi, Lisa Spacek. Okay. So that's the piece that goes here. And I did it without cutting off and um, you know, now that's a partial flower, but that's just how it's going to be. <clears throat> so these two pieces are going to go into the last kit that you guys have, which is the one with the balmy blue embossing on it. So we're going to slip those in. <clears throat> so hopefully that helped you and that makes sense for doing the cutting. Because now Nancy has a set of card kits ready to stamp and assemble. And <clears throat> this is what she has left for the paper, which is completely awesome. She can do lots of other projects with it. I am going to pull out here. Let's see where it is. Not that one. And, and where's that? That one. <clears throat> okay. I was just checking them. Make sure I had them right. All right. <clears throat> so that is that. If you guys look at the stamp set here. Every stamp is on a block sitting over here. So I did end up using them all. Um, if you have different sentiments, you can switch up however you want. Um, they're your cards. I tell people make them how you want to see them. Um, I'm going to throw these in Nancy's kit real quick here. So she has that put together. <clears throat> We're done with the cutters, I think, for the moment. Unless I did something wrong. <laughs> then I'll have to pull it back out. And we're going to start stamping. So I was looking at these cards. There's not a lot of ink colors, you guys, that are used. <clears throat> I primarily pulled in uh, Mary Merlot, Old Olive, Balmy Blue got used somewhere on an inside, and Blushing Bride. But for the outside, generally, it's these two colors. Um, full disclosure, I realized it after the fact that <laughs> the, tri the Detail Trio Punch actually retired. <clears throat> and that's what I use to round your corners on these two cards. So my apologies. Um, if you have something else that you can use for rounding corners, great. But I just thought it added so much having the rounded corners. Um, I don't try to use retired product when I do card classes, but sometimes hmm, my memory fails me. So we're going to save this guy for last. He's my absolute favorite. <clears throat> and we're going to start. Let's go. This is the order we're going to go in. I'm going to set these off to the side and pull out card kits here. So in your envelopes, you guys, we're going to start with that one and let's set these back here so I have a little more space. All right. The paper is beautiful, Atoki. I, I completely agree. 110%. So I'm going to set that there. In your kits, you'll have your Mary Merlot base. If you guys noticed, <laughs> there was a theme with this class. Um, all of the bases were Mary Merlot. So I, needless to say, went through a lot of Mary Merlot paper. <laughs> so you're gonna just, you guys have your cards are already um, folded. They are definitely not burnished. So I always tell people to get um, your <clears throat> bone folder out and burnish the edges. And then it's a vertical card. Um, 
And what you should have in your kit, this little guy here comes from the Stylish Shapes. That was added on for a lot of these cards. The Stylish Shapes is super cool. There's little banners, circles, and squares. Um, yes, Marshall Long, you can buy the card kit. <laughs> you asked if, can you buy the card kit? Yeah, I <laughs> No, I don't want to buy a card kit for myself, but if you would like to buy one, yes, I have a few left. And so you just have to confirm in the message here and then follow up with me with an email and I can make sure to get you one. So it was $36 mailed or $30 for porch pickup. All right, so you got your little banner. You guys have a little strip of Mary Merlot and then you cut your little strip of designer series paper. Um, you guys will have a piece of white. Um, I believe I rounded all four of your corners, not just the top two. <clears throat> so um, just know that that might be a little different. And you know what? I can always confirm that because <laughs> I have Nancy's here to, to scope out what I did. Um, not that one. It was <clears throat> not that one. It must have been this last one. So your kits, you guys, will have it rounded on all four corners, which it doesn't matter because the bottom gets covered up anyways. So I just wanted to confirm with you that it might look a little different. Um, you have a piece of balmy blue that is embossed with the painted textures embossing folder. Super cool. Uh, you just cut your designer paper um, two and a half by five and a quarter. And we have a double mat on this one, you guys, super pretty. So when you open it up, it's got the balmy blue with the white. So um, that's what you have in your kit. So we'll, let's get busy with some stamping. So you're gonna need your three white pieces and we're gonna stamp some flowers and a sentiment primarily. So what I would do is I would start with the flower head first and then work my way down because the bottom of the stem will get covered up anyways. Uh, these stamps are red rubber. Um, if you're not a fan of this particular stamp, hi, Julie Poindexter. Um, okay, I'm not the biggest fan of this. <laughs> be honest with you, it looks mm, frumpy to me. I don't know what the, why. It just, it's not as pretty and pronounced. I do like those two better. So when I designed the cards, I made sure to use all three of the flower heads so that they got used so you could see them. If you don't like that one or you're using different stamps in general, it really doesn't matter. But if you like that one better or that one better, you're more than welcome just to think about it. You can stamp other flower heads on them. It doesn't have to be exactly how I do it. Oh, there are my cards. Oh, man. I just pulled open my drawer and I found all the class cards for <laughs> on Thursday night. I'm like, where did they go? Okay. <clears throat> that is a good win for me to find them. Okay. So what I'm going to do is check my ink pad first because I don't know the last time I've used it. I just want to make sure it stamps really nice. It's a little bit darker than the one I have up in my craft room, which is more than okay. <clears throat> so I am going to stamp in Mary Merlot and or put that near the top. I'm going to move that piece of paper so I can kind of see where I'm stamping. Um, <laughs> Alora says she's just the opposite. So there's that. It's going to go up here. Like that. You can see how much different the ink pads. Like that one's a little bit lighter. That one has more ink in it. And then on the inside, we have a flower. And I did it off to the left-hand side. So I am going to put this back over here. So I have a little border. So then in case I go over, which I know I will. And then <clears throat> our sentiment is also in this color. So as long as I have it open, it's a little one, you guys says here for you always this is how i would do it you guys <clears throat> you get a one sh you get two shots on your banner and so i always like to practice on the edge of my paper and it's like oh my gosh okay it's straight so that's cool um i like to practice again especially when i have something that small that one was crooked i'm just getting a feel for it <clears throat> so with this banner there's a soft rolled edge and then there's a rough dotty edge and to me the rougher edge is the back okay and the smooth rolled edge is the front but um i'm gonna flip it over and do the back first and try it i'm gonna put the stamp where i think it needs to go and hopefully it's good okay well it was up a hair um and it would work but you can see that it's i'd love it to be a little lower um if you don't have mary merlot what would you use razzleberry Yes, I would go with like Blackberry Bliss Second Strength Barb or a Razzle, Rich Razzleberry. Absolutely. 
Um, so I'm going to move it down a little bit because I can notice on the back of my stamp, I have more red rubber down here than I have here. So that's probably what's making up for why um, it went up a little higher. So I'm going to bring it down, y'all, a hair and see if that helped. That did help. So now what I did is I got to practice on the back first, figure out what I need to do, and then I was good for the front. Um, that's, I guess, my advice for using something, a, a small banner like that. If you end up not doing it good, you could always cut yourself another little piece of white that is super small to put right there, right? It doesn't have to be the banner, but hopefully you get it good. Um, you're very welcome, Barb. All right, so then Old Olive is next, and that is going to be for our stem. I do love the stem, and I'm going to see how my ink looks. And... It has this wash look to it, you guys. So if you look at the stamps, you can see that there's light and there's dark shaded areas. That's part of the stamp set. Okay, so then this is going to go like that. All right, so we've got the old olive stem, and now we're going to stamp our stem on the inside. Now, if you like to do your envelopes, don't hesitate to do your envelopes. Well, I got that really crooked. I'm gonna redo this. <laughs> so I just noticed that there's a little <laughs> section right here where the stem comes out. And so I'm going to straighten up my flower a little bit and then see if my stem will come out better and straight. Yeah, that's better. There. I don't like things to take up the whole page. I like to have them look like they're coming onto the page. So I'm good with having it cut off like that. If you like yours all the way on, just move it over slightly and just put it all on the page. Hi, Brenda Little. Um, on the center, the tiny banner didn't work for me on either side. Okay, and that's exactly what I why I mentioned, Jean. That's perfect. Just cut yourself a small little piece. I bet this is probably an inch and a half by three eighths of an inch. Just cut yourself a little white one, a little right rectangle, and it'll be okay. You just won't, and you can even banner it yourself. You could banner the ends. You just might not have all the little stitching that goes around there. So, all right, let's all go to A and W. <laughs> just kidding. Let's clean our stamps and then we'll have them okay in case they fall over onto something. <laughs> that has happened before. So let's clean that up and let's put the card together. So what we have here, so there's lots of layers going on, guys. So I'm going to put adhesive on the back of this and also my designer paper. So we're gonna put those. So if you are new to watching me, I like to do, as long as I have the glue bottle open, I love to put adhesive on multiple things if possible so that I'm only opening and shutting it a few times. So this is gonna go right onto your card base like that. And then this white layer will go onto the balmy blue. Hi, Francis Rodriguez. This will go onto the balmy blue layer. And then this can get flipped over. And then this, <clears throat> like to me, there's really no front or back to this, but you can flip it over and figure out well, which side you like better. <laughs> They're kind of horse a piece. <clears throat> so these will get some liquid glue as well. And this one will go, I've got it. Let's get this. So it's got like an eighth inch margin on the right, but then it's centered top to bottom. And then this one goes on our inside. Hi, Pam Newhauser. So that goes over here like that. All right. <clears throat> so now you've got these two strips, the little sentiment, and we got to add ribbon. So what I did for the ribbon is it actually, because there really isn't a, a mat on the outside of the card, what I did is put the ribbon behind this little strip. It was too hard otherwise to put it behind these two. So grab your tear and tape and we're gonna prep a little piece on the end of each of these. So this Mary Merlot strip here. <clears throat> and then grab the ribbon and what you can do is cut it just a hair longer than 
the strip of paper is. Okay, I really did grab my glue scissors to do that. So <laughs> I shouldn't have. Um, so I will give you guys a little tip. Maybe <clears throat> you guys know this already, but there's little flecks of stuff in here. And I've been taught that if you use your ribbon scissors, it kind of dulls your ribbon scissors because of those little flecks. So I grabbed my glue scissors because I don't care about my glue scissors so much. But that's why I struggled cutting it. But um, I try not to use my ribbon scissors when I am cutting ribbon that has this fleckly, <laughs> the fleckles in it. All right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is put another little piece of tear and tape right on the end of each of those. But I am not going to pull that off because... I'm going to prep with dimensionals and we're going to run dimensionals along the back side of this and we'll just put them right close to it. Um, you could have peeled them off and put the dimensionals right over it, but um, I just thought that this would be okay. Really, how you guys put adhesives and dimensionals or glue on the backs is really a personal preference. Um, so this is going to go so you can see a little bit of the blue down here, but whoa, hold up, wait a minute. So this one, let's just eyeball where this is gonna go. So this is gonna go here. So you have options here, you guys. There's a lot of different layering going on. And I just realized that I did watch this. This is what I did. I popped this up. So let's do that, because I should have done this first. So we're popping this white piece up, but then this strip of red is gonna be a little bit weird. So what we're gonna do is put this down and I tried to match the blue all the way around. So it sits in here kind of like that. But now what's happening is we've got two, we, we, this is flat and this is popped up. So we gotta do a double stuff on the sides is what I think we're gonna do. So let's just peel that one off for now and put it over here. So this is a too high, I call it a double stuff. So that will make it flush across here. And we don't need this one here. And we don't need this one here. No, we do, Never mind, <laughs> Guys, can you tell I've been on vacation for a couple days? So that's a double single. And then when we get to the end here, I'm gonna look to see how much is hanging over. And it's really not that much. So we're just gonna leave it just at the one. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that didn't confuse you guys. Ultimately, we're putting this right here and it gets put right there. So we've got a double here, a single, a single, single, or what you could have done is a single here and no dimensionals here and just glued it flat to the white piece. I guess what I'm getting at is there's two different heights going on and so you just wanna be careful. Hi, Linda Hodge. Hi, Mary Carls. All right, this one goes right here. And what I'm going to do for that is just use a line of tear and tape, I think, and get that put on here. Um, and this reaches over that far. And it, I'm just going to put it half on the tear and tape. Excuse me, half on the ribbon and then half on the Mary Merlot paper. And let's just set that right on the top here. So that should help that stick. And then this little guy is gonna set right like that. So you can make it flat, you could pop it up, however you want it. There's not a lot of stability right here is what I'm noticing though, because it's popped up. So what I'm gonna do is sneak a couple dimensionals right here so that that, that designer paper has extra st um, structure, I guess you could say. Like extra support there, okay? So that's gonna go like that. Now this little guy, we're gonna glue that on with some liquid glue. Oh, that one's not open. So let's go to the one that's open. Cover up my <laughs> bad one. And that's gonna stick right like here. Got it off to the right-hand side a little bit. And then you're gonna need a little bit more ribbon. And all you're gonna do is make yourself a little knot and trim it at the end. and you're gonna use a glue dot. I'm gonna worry about the other end once I have it on the card. I generally like to cut the ribbon once it's on the card so I can see which way to cut it. So put a little glue dot there and put that. It's like, it's a little bow tie for the flower, right? All right, so we're gonna grab a different scissors, 
from that end, and I might go a little shorter. And then this end. There. Okay, and we're not done. We have embellishments. So the iridescent pearls are so pretty. <laughs> if you guys don't have them, I'm happy you have them now for those taking the class. If you don't have them, you're, oh, you're just going to love them, I think, um, once you get them. Uh, they're so pretty. Um, so there's two different sizes. There's a bigger and a smaller one. And I have five on here. So you guys, when you do this class with me, um, I love for you to use lots of embellishments on your cards. Generally, when I do my other classes, I don't always, I usually do three for embellishments. For this one, you've got lots of embellishments. So you might as well embellish away, right? Um, so Stella Ng, let's see here. Um, I would be hesitant. Hi, Zaina. I would be hesitant to do this watercolory stamping because it will make it bleed. Um, so what you could do to give a little bit of Stella action is you could Stella up some of this designer series paper like that. You could also run a little bit over the Mary Merlot strip down there and you could also do your balmy blue um, along the edges here just to glitz it up. So. On the PDF, I always say Stella it up, <laughs> however you like to. Um, so that's how I would do that one. So I think that one comes together. The layout is really cool, you guys. If you ever do swap cards or if you need a nice, easy layout, doesn't use excessive amounts of designer paper, using a little scrap here too, uh, you just put a little here and put a focal image there and it turns out really nice. So we got one done, you guys. Woohoo! <laughs> one in the books for the night. So we'll keep cruising now. Um, thanks, Doris. Hi, Tammy Steckling. Hi, Jennifer Jones. Okay, so there's one for us that is done. We'll move this guy out of the way. We're going to do this one next. Okay, so thanks, Julie. All right, so that's our next one, you guys. We're going to work on this. And let's see what I've got here. So I have your Mary Merlot base for you <laughs> again. And make sure you grab your bone folder and burnish it. Make sure to keep this one vertical. Hi, Kathy King. Vertical card, right? So let's, I always like to keep it that way. Uh, thanks, Philly. All right, in your kits, you guys, you will have, let me just check here. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to see what size I gave you. Some scrap paper, I think. Yes, I gave you a piece of paper that is this size. <clears throat> if you're wondering what that's for, that is for you to stamp your flower, your leaves, and the foliage. It should work out. We're going to test it. <laughs> All right, so you also have a piece of white for your inside. You already cut your designer paper. Thanks, Linda. The colors are so pretty together. So that's your here, but we, ha we can't put that down yet because there's some ribbon on the side. Um, then you have a piece of mossy metal. It's embossed with the time worn type embossing folder, All right? So that's the bottom mat and you'll have a Mary Merlot rectangle and it goes with the stitched rec, uh, squish, squish square, stitched square. So you guys, <clears throat> this is also part of the stylish shapes where you got the banner from in the first card. So these layer like this in your kit, you will have this little sprig or foliage piece in, um, Calypso coral. Hi, Joyce Carter. So that is for there. And you'll have to make a bow and we'll have to add ribbon, stamp a little sentiment. And by the magic of TV, mine are done, but I'm gonna show you how you come about getting them. So let's grab and let's see what the inside looks like. Okay, a flower like that. So that is the same leaf that we just used. And we're gonna use the sprig here. And it's the flower head, that's this. <laughs> Donna said that her demonstrator has a buy one get one sale coming up this weekend and she thinks she'll be getting more DSP. Yes, this is so pretty. Um, oh, Zaina, I hope you feel better and that you catch the replay sometime. Thinking of you and sending you love and hugs, my friend. Okay, so let's do this first. So we need to get a flower. This will be easy. This will be a little practice. We're going to put a flower and I did it on the left hand side again. So for some reason, that stem just felt like it went that way better. Uh, it looks like there's a divot there or a divot there, but this looks like the top of the flower, you guys. So it may look like there's no orientation to it, but I feel like the way that 
the middle is, it dictates that orientation. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side here. And then we're gonna do Old Olive. And that can go right there. So that'll be our inside. So we'll glue that in a second. So that's done. Now, <laughs> I know that I mapped this out. Oh, I did it already. Yes, here we go. I have a map for you guys to show you how this fits. So this is what needs to get stamped, okay? Promise, this fits. So we are going to stamp. Now there's no matter or orientation for this because you're gonna use the dies and you're going to cut them out. So we're gonna do one here, boom. Um, we'll leave this open because we need the color again. Um, I'm gonna do the Blushing Bride next though because I feel like I want to get that off to the side. I don't know why, but I'm feeling that one next. And that one fits up in here in the corner diagonal like that whoa that's my new blushing bride pad oh my goodness that's dark oh gosh you guys look at the difference between my two blushing bride pads that's the pad i have upstairs this is the blushing bride i have downstairs yikesers okay so let's just see what second strength looks like <laughs> and we're gonna stamp that on the back same side right in the corner and see what happens. Hi, Sandy Zidane. Oh, man, that's much better. Oh, wow. See, it matches a lot better. It's Maybe I did it at second strength and didn't remember that, but wow. Okay, so now because I did that, I don't want to accidentally mess this up. So I'm going to cut that off of here and save that, right? But now I'm going to fit my greenery back over on this side. You guys, sometimes it happens with ink pads that they... Uh, you got to figure out if first strength is better or second strength is better. So this guy will still fit on here. <laughs> so strategically, that's how that works. <laughs> so just a recap. We really did just stamp three things on that piece of paper you have. A flower had the leaves and stem and the spriggy thing. So that is what that piece of paper is for, is for you to do that. So, all right. Good call on that. So that's it for this one. That's it for the Blushing Bride. And um, we're gonna just set this off to the side. And by the magic of TV, did you get, do you have another pack? Yes, Sarah, I do. If you would like one, confirm it. If you just wanna say, yep, I want a ink, paper, scissors, I'll write you on a post-it note here and I will um, I'll make sure I save one for you. Also, um, I think it was Marsha. Marsha, I, I was looking for you to confirm if you wanted me to hold one for you. So by the magic of TV, I've already die cut these three pieces. So on our inside, or excuse me, the square here though, we need just because, um, just because. Now, <laughs> I only did just because, because that was another sentiment. Um, finally made it to stay, yay. Okay, so we're gonna practice down here and see how it goes. All right, Sarah, I can definitely save one for you too. If you want to send a check for uh, 36, that would be great. I know that you usually send me checks. All right. So this one is going to go down here and I have it to the right bottom corner because the flower comes down that side. So I'm going to tuck it in here, <laughs> tuck it in to go to sleep. Oh, Marsha Long was one. Marsha, Mar Mar I got to write you down there. Marsha Long. Okay, great. Now I have you and you can send 36 as well. And then I get that in the mail for you tomorrow. Okay, so that's it for stamping, I believe. We'll set those there. And let's work on putting this together. <clears throat> so we are doing the lamb technique. If you can see this ribbon like that, it's weaved back and forth. Some people are not fans of that. So if you don't want to do the lamb technique, you don't have to. You could do a, a, a different version. You could just run ribbon down the side nice and straight like that, which let's see here if you can see, it would still look cool along the edge like that. But for those of you that don't know what the lamb technique is, my cousin's Kelly Lamb, uh, she kind of didn't invent this, but she started doing it. Um, hi, Pam Simmons from North Carolina. Um, we call it the lamb technique because her last name is Lamb. <laughs> so what I, and I'll show you guys how we do this. So we're gonna run the tear and tape along the right edge. Um, Mary Carl's. You can have one. 
Um, another one. I was going to say, you already have it, but yes, Mary, um, you can have another one. I think um, yours porch pickup is 30, so that works. So I think I might have two left, you guys. <laughs> I'm getting down there. So we're going to peel that off. And how to do the lamb technique. Um, I'm a right-handed person, so I like to hold the ribbon with my right hand. And I catch the tail of it at the top, just like that. And I'm just going to, I never look at the back side of it while I do it. If that's something you need to figure out how to do, um, the going back and forth, go for it. Um, I'll take one also if you have another one. And then you wrote, no, I don't. Mary, I don't know what that means. <laughs> do you not want it? <laughs> if you don't, that's okay. You don't have to take it. But um, if you do want one, I don't remember why you would say, no, I don't. You guys, all I'm doing is weaving the ribbon like this. And I'm feeling with my back fingers here that it's just catching the tear and tape as I do this. So, and you're working your way down and making little humpty humps with the ribbon. Okay, the humpty hump dance. Okay, back and forth. You're doing the humpty dumpty or the humpty dance weave here. So, back and forth. The bigger you make your loops, the more ribbon you're going to use. Um, if you want it looking bulkier, you can make it look like bigger loops. But I generally go back and forth like this. I don't have one. Yes, I want one. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember. You're right, Mary. No, Mary, you're on my list. So I think mom took the kit to you or she, she had it at her house and you were gonna, you picked it up. I could have sworn. Um, we'll have to double check that, Mary, because you are on my list to have one. Um, I'm pretty sure that I sent it with mom last week before I left um, for the trip. So we need to figure out if it's still at mom's house <laughs> or if you got it, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were signed up for it. So I don't know if you want another one then. So, um, all right. But you guys, now that that's the back of it, that's not very secure. This will have a tendency to want to pull out. Hi, Kathy Groves. Um, Sharon Davis, perfect. Yep, send $36 to me. Um, if you need my address, it's at the bottom of my emails that I send out. Um, you're just going to run the tear and tape over that, okay? So um, that will help keep it together. All right, and we got IPS July for Sharon. All right, Sharon, I got you down. Mary will work on figuring out what happened to yours. But I know mom took it from me. <laughs> she took it home. Um, so we're going to peel that off. And we're going to, if you're over on the tear and tape, it's okay. Just roll it right back. And then what we're going to use is a little bit of liquid. Oh, you know what I did? I popped that up. I popped that up with dimensionals. Oh, and I forgot to take that one off. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's take that off my sample. The backing. I forgot to take the backing off. All right. So, all right, check what you picked up from her because I'm pretty sure I sent the ink, paper, scissors with her already. All right, so we're going to put dimensionals. Now, the reason I pulled off the tear and tape on that is because that little back and forth weaving is a little bit tall. And it's probably about the, hi Betty Ray, no worries. It's probably about the same height as these dimensionals. So, um, and then it also helps secure it. All right, so let's pick all those off. And then that's going to go on to, oh, perfect. I'm glad you have the address, Sharon. All right, then this is going to go, and I've got a little bit of green border on the side here. And that'll catch over on that side. And it's about the same height once that little roughage is on the side. All right. And if you need to trim off any of your designer paper because it's longer than the base, you could do that at this point. But otherwise, grab your liquid glue, and then we're gonna glue that, and we're gonna glue our white inside in, like that. So, let's get this guy on the outside, like that. And then our white inside, go like that. All right, it's taking shape now. So this stitched square, you can put a little bit of adhesive. Yeah, Judy Sharp, I definitely agree. These papers are so pretty. They go together so nicely. Um, they complement. So this is gonna go on here. 
And remember, we've already got this popped up. Hi, Vicki Fritz, once. So the two that go on the side here need to be double stuff. So we're gonna make sure that they are closer to the edge like that. And then we're going to do them too high like an Oreo cookie that is double stuffed. Okay, so there's our too high. And then on the other side, we can just do single ones. And then these two are gonna catch the green over here. You guys can see that. So something like this. All right, so that's what we've got going on. And now we've got these other four pieces here. So the coral piece, as long as you don't have it down, go ahead and Stella that. It's easier to Stella. You don't have to worry about the stem area because that kind of gets hidden. But we could do that already. And <clears throat> how do we put this together now? What I would do is I would put a glue dot behind the stem right here. And I would connect it to the flower head. Okay, and remember I thought that there was a certain direction to it. Um, like ultimately this is over here and the stem kind of hangs down the bottom. So it's gonna be something like that. The flower does cover the leaf a little bit. Hi, Patricia Piscopio. All right, so now our flower is together. I did pop up the leaves and the flower head and I glued the phlegm, the phlegm stat, <laughs> the stem flat. Oh, I've been doing that my entire life, you guys. <laughs> Mixing up the first letter. All right, so there's that, that, and that. So the top is gonna be popped up and the stem is gonna be flat. So for right now, I'm going to pick off those dimensionals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to catch the bomb baby's breath, maybe is what we'll call this. Um, oh, so you got it then. I thought it was August 4th, but I never got a PDF. Okay, so Mary Carls, then you did get the catalog launch party class as well. And you're right. I haven't written the PDF for that because I haven't had a minute to write it. So, so you, <clears throat> I think you're good then that you got this class and you got the catalog launch party. I think you did. I think you got both. All right. So you guys saw what I did here. Um, this little baby's breath comes out the back and it kind of caught there. And now this little guy, he's going to sneak in up here as well. And there's actually a dimensional right there that if I sneak that right in here like that, he's going to catch that dimensional. So I've got one unit right here, <laughs> one conglomerate of what I, you know, all of it came together. And I don't want to see that little thing popping out here um, from the baby's breath. So I'm going to just snip it so slightly. So it's gone. And now this needs to go onto here. I'm good with my dimensionals. So what I'm going to use is liquid glue in some of these other areas. Um, oh, the other thing I noticed here is part of my <laughs> tail is poking out here. Oh, okay, perfect, Mary. Thanks for car confirming. All right, I'm going to throw away your little note because you are GTG, which is good to go. All right, so we're going to flip this over and add a little glue along this area and all the way down to there because I've got enough dimensional action going on. So got this going something like that. Okay, now we have a cutesy little bow on here. So the bow maker comes in very handy for that. You guys, I do have these available. A friend from Johnsburg makes them from, for me. I have them, they're $8. And if you're not getting anything else, usually shipping is $5. But if you have a class that's going out, we can consolidate and save a little on shipping. But um, I did a tip Tuesday on it. Um, February of 2020? February of 2021. So it's like 23 minutes long. <laughs> Helen Voigt, I just sent her the link for it uh, so she could watch it. But it's a great little tutorial on how to use the bow maker. It makes, for me, perfect bows every time. Um, and it just really helps me in making cute bows. Uh, so when I do a product-based class like this, you guys get a roll of ribbon. I do not make your bows ahead of time. <laughs> um, but any other class that I do uh, where I give you a bow, I usually make the bow. Random question. Are we able to order paper pumpkin through you? Um, if so, how much is it with the shipping? Absolutely. 
Stacy, there are two or there's a couple different ways. Let's talk about that. Paper pumpkin. If I order the paper pumpkin and it ships to my house, like I had four extra um, coming into the last week um, with the July paper pumpkin, um, they cost me $26 and I can mail them out to people if they need them mailed and it's usually $6 to mail it. Like Elaine though was local, so she could just pick it up. So you guys, I just made a bow and um, people are so impressed how fast I can make a bow. Oh, that's awesome, Patricia. Um, I just made a bow and I'm putting it on here. So if you buy your paper pumpkin and it's for me and I've already got it shipped to my house, then there's extra shipping because there's shipping to me and then there's shipping to you. So the other thing you could do um, is if you want to, you could buy a prepaid code. So the great thing about it being celebration right now, um, oh, Anne says that her bow maker's awesome too. And so did Latokia, awesome. So right, right now, like let's say you would want to buy three months. Just say, okay, three months is like $63. You guys, if you buy a three month prepaid code and you use my current host code, you would get a free class from me. You get a free celebration item and you get your name on the board. Um, you'd have to add that prepaid account though to your paper pumpkin subscription and then Stampin' Up! would mail them directly to you for the next three months and not charge your account or your credit card. All right, so let's say you only want one month, right? You could buy a one month prepaid code as well. Um, if you add to it, so a prepaid is like um, $22.50, but then there's shipping and tax. It ultimately brings it up to like $26. Um, you could um, uh, then add that one prepaid code to your account. But if you're getting, hi, Carla Cordes, if you're not wanting to sign up for Paper Pumpkin and you just want me to send you a Paper Pumpkin from my house, it's usually like $32. And I, like, I have five people already told me that they want the August Paper Pumpkin one, uh, the Paper Pumpkin, that the kit that's coming up with the sunflowers. And I've got a list. And if they want it mailed, I'll mail it out to them. And then if they're local, they just pick it up. So you guys, if you notice on here, there's some iridescent pearls. But you know what? They're not white. They're actually colored. So there are no Mary Merlot. Ah, you know what? I bet I didn't use cherry cobbler. So Karen, what's that? And it probably has the PDF out there. I think I, well, let's do cherry cobbler and see what happens. It could be Blackberry Bliss too, but either one is probably going to look really pretty. Um, yeah, they might be a little different. So I think in the PDF, I wrote uh, cherry cobbler, but in this one, we're going to use the cherry cobbler. And then for the next one, we're going to use um, Blackberry Bliss. There are no rich raspberry markers. There's Blackberry Bliss and cherry cobbler. So I think I wrote in the PDF cherry cobbler, but maybe it is rich raspberry. Ah, Blackberry Bliss. So <clears throat> so the, there's a bigger one. And I liked having a little bit of color on this white square over here. So we're just going to put those colored over here. And then I did add a white larger one up here on the green. And then I put another white smaller one kind of tucked in over there. So do, oh, you're very welcome, Stacey. I hope that made sense um, and answered your question. Uh, so we didn't Stella everything though. The one other thing I would Stella on here is the trim of this Mary Merlot border that goes around your stitched square. And there's a little bit of it up there too. Well, the other thing you could do is this little bit of mossy meadow that's on the edge over here. I think Kelly refilled my <clears throat> my Stella pen because it was working. Last week, it wasn't working for me so well because it was dried out. <clears throat> so, you guys, I think that's it. We've got our second card done. And again, if you did not have these stamps, remember we talked about going into your designer series paper and pulling out the things from the paper and just fussy cutting them or die cutting them. Um, is the light cherry color or dark? I use the dark cherry. So here's what I did. And it's hard to see it in the video. This one I used dark cherry cobbler. And I think maybe I used Blackberry Bliss. But honestly, you guys, they both look nice. But we'll just, we'll, we'll try um, Blackberry Bliss on the next card that I did that on. So we're going to set that here. It's a new one, Stella. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> it smells like rubbing alcohol, though. And I do, you guys, I do have a date on here. It's not, this one isn't the new one. This one right here is the new one because now they're making them with these clear caps. I actually put a date on this one. 
It says April 18th of 2019. So that one has been around the block a time or two. <laughs> All right, so this is my sample card. So let's set that over here. And we're going to make the next one. Okay, so this one, you guys, also has a double mat. So the balmy blue. I like to do that on these ink paper scissors cards because you're using your own designer paper. I feel like you need more in your kit from me. Um, I would have to check that bow maker out. It looks complicated. It's actually not Marsha. I promise you it's not. Um, Marsha, if you send me an email here to Chris M. Bertram at msn.com and say, hey, will you pretty please send me a link to the video of your Tip Tuesday with the bow maker? I'll send it to you. So if you, and then you can watch the video and you can see if it really is complicated or not. All right, so you guys in your kit, you'll have your Mary Merlot base again. <laughs> so there's our Mary Merlot. Now I switched things up on you. It's a horizontal card, right? So we wanna make sure we stamp things horizontally. Um, your balmy blue is your traditional mat for the inside. And if I'm not mistaken, the white pieces are the same size. I'm pretty sure. So that'll be for our inside. Then you have your white for the outside and you've already cut your designer paper, which fits right on there. This little tag thing, band, whatever you wanna call it, <laughs> is from the designer tags. All right, so that will go here. Same thing, guys. I did the corner rounder on this one, and so I've done it on all your cards, so that's done for you, so don't worry about that. It's retired again, I mentioned that. This little guy then goes behind here like that. So, um, bow makers are easy to use. Yes, duh, Dev agrees with me, they are easy. I wish I could get one here in Canada. I haven't seen, oh, use so Donna, yeah, I know we talked about that. So I, fortunately, I'm gonna grab my Blackberry Bliss marker. Um, I had actually, Somebody in Canada, I can't think of who it is right now at the top of my head, but her brother lived in the States. And so I was able to mail it to her brother and he figured it out with her after that. So, but I could mail it to the States. Um, so I'm gonna use Blackberry Bliss for these just to see what the difference is. Um, oh, Anne says the video explains it very well. Yay, I'm happy to hear that. All right, so stamping you guys. So let's... Let's do a little cleanup on aisle two real quick. And <laughs> that actually made sense because it was our second card that we've, <laughs> we made the mess on. All right, so we're gonna get rid of this one for the moment. Our green is the same. Oh, you know what? I have some trickery on this one for you guys. Oh, I don't know if I would have remembered that until I just looked at it. So same colors, you guys. <laughs> we've got our Mary Merlot and we've got our old olive so i'll I think i'll have to get one of my brothers or my sisters to make one for me oh donna that would be perfect it is just a block of wood with holes drilled into it every half inch and honestly i'd put one in the middle here um but you wouldn't have to but it's they're every half inch the greatest thing about it is that there's just holes on the side here for your nails to go in so you don't lose them all right, so we need our Mary Merlot oh, 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 first. And <laughs> this is my favorite flower. Where does the Mary Merlot tag come from? So Sherry Stewart, that is from a die set. It's called Designer Tags. It's in the annual catalog, Designer Tags. So on this one, you guys, there's a more open area right there. That is the bottom where the stem comes out of. So... I, for some reason, did this one on the right or the left as well. So we're going to put this one right there. And then over here, it's going to go in the top left corner because we're going to save room for our sentiment. So there. And then let's do, okay, so this is where my trickery comes in, you guys. <laughs> All right, so if we look at the stamp, this guy with the leaf, wherever he went, right here you will notice that those two leaves are not the same two leaves as that, okay? All right, and that's why I clean this, but I used the stem of this, and then I used the leaves from this one. And, oh, you're very welcome, Sherry. Let me know if you can't find it. I'll pull up the catalog and show you right away while we're live here if you can't find it. Um, I would grab a marker, <laughs> and I would actually do the stem first, and color it with your old olive marker. Karen Westein's gonna tell me, I probably didn't include that in the PDF, but the other, you know, you don't necessarily need a marker. You could use washi tape 
and mask off and then ink up. But I feel like I use less ink if I just get the stem. And I would do the stem first because this will fit right in here like that. Oh, good. Glad to hear you got it, Cherry. So that fits in there like that. Okay. Um, I wish maybe I would have gone <laughs> in this area a little bit more. So I'm just going to draw it in there and that's good. So that's where the stem comes from. But now the leaves, and I did the stem first because when I did this originally, I did the stems and it was really hard to get the stem right in the center. This way, if I did the stem, now to do the leaves, it actually, it, it just works so much easier. So we're gonna put the leaves on like that. So, but we're not done because we have this guy. And same thing, we're going to, we get to, to practice again. So either masking your leaves off to get the stem inked up or color with a marker. Either way, we're just using the stem. And I did the exact same thing. So it's not quite all the way up in there. So we can just color that in. And then the leaves. So let's grab these leaves and put them in there like that. Okay, so one last thing is the sentiment. And it says, with love. It's a teeny tiny little one. <laughs> Be careful not to create a halo with this one. All right, so let's see if it stamps straight. It does, pretty good. And I added that guy right over here. Good. All right, so I think that's it for this stamping. And now we get to assemble. So, first things first. Oh, darn, I gave all those markers away. Oh, no, Laura. So, you can do it with your ink pad. No worries. What you're going to do is you are going to take your washi tape, rip off a little piece, and you're going to put it right next to that and do it on both sides. And then you're going to cover up the whole leaf and then ink up and then take off your washi tape and all you should have left is the stem. And that works too. So, um, all right, let's get glue happy. So we can glue this, this, and this. All right, so these three things we can adhere to the wherever they need to go to. So we've got that. Now, let's say this one goes on to here. The balmy blue looks so cool with the Mary Merlot. So here we've got Mossy Merlot, Mossy with Mary Merlot. We've got balmy with Mary Merlot. The coral even worked nicely. And this one goes on the balmy blue mat, like that. And then this one goes from one end to the other just like that. It was just to add a little pink color. It was a little scrap. I thought, well, might as well use it up, right? All right. So this can glue in and that's it for the moment. So there's a trick with running this ribbon through here. So let's get this out of the way and put this inner innard like that. All right. So if you look at the card, the ribbon goes over the top of this, through the hole, and down the back, right? So let's get what ribbon we need from here. It needs to be long enough to tuck our tails behind the white. So something like that. We're going to use that scissors. And we need to, just to hold it, to keep it in place, I would put either a glue dot or a little tear and tape. Let's put a little bit right in the center and that will help hold it down. So be like that. And then what you're gonna do is weave this tail through and then weave that tail through, okay? And now what we can do is put dimensionals on the back of this. And while we're doing that, we can put some on the back of that. So we've got, I do five on something that size and I do four over here. Okay, so this will then go onto our 
balmy blue designer paper. So just try to get that centered if you can. <laughs> Top to bottom, left to right, something like that. All right, and then flip that over. And that's where we're gonna do the tear and tape sandwich. <laughs> so put a little tear and tape down and then we're gonna secure the ends behind. I like to look at it from the front just to make sure it's straight and then flip those tails behind. And then I use another piece over each tail like that. And then we can put a little bit of glue. This one's getting a little light for me. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd need the next one, but so far so good. All right, flip it open, make sure it's right. So then now this goes on here. If you want to pop it up, you could do that as well. But you notice that the Mary Merlot is a little more pronounced around the edges. That's what I did with that. And then it also made it so that the white pieces weren't confusing for you. They were the same size. And then this goes right in the center of that area. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, what can you Stella? You could definitely Stella up your designer tag frame. I call it a frame, I think, in the PDF. I just refer to it as a frame. Hi, Bonnie Lesperance. And then I wouldn't touch the stamped area, though, because that will make it bleed. Um, you could Stella up <laughs> Bonnie joint just in time for the Stella action. Um, if it was Bonnie, she would definitely Stella up all of over the designer paper like this, just to add a little bit of glitz to it, just like that. Okay, the iridescent pearls, you guys. So we've got three white ones in the center. Okay, so let's pull those off right away. And then we talked about doing these with the Blackberry Bliss. And then we're gonna compare them to see which you guys like better. So the three white ones go on the inside of the flower. And then I've got five. So two, nope, yep, two big ones. Be very careful coloring your blend, coloring with your blends because you just don't wanna demolish those tips of your markers. Um, Cause coloring hard surfaces is not the nicest for your markers. Okay, and you can't use alcohol, you can't use water-based markers to color these. You have to use the blends. Okay, so now I've got one over here and then a little guy next to it. And then filled in the white space. You guys, I have a hard time with white space. <laughs> so, and using little pearls, colored, added color to the card. So. Here's what we've got with this one. And you guys have a whole packet of your iridescent pearls. So here's the difference. Now, I don't know if you can catch it in the camera. Um, not really. In person, I can see a difference. But to the naked eye, like somebody just seen this, this one was the cherry collar worked perfectly fine. Um, either Blackberry Bliss or Cherry Collar, dark or light, either one would be fine. It pulls out the red. So, all right. There we've got our third card done. So let's put that over here. And the gourmet card is what my mom calls this one. <laughs> so we're gonna save my favorite one for last. And it's actually probably the easiest one. All right, you guys are liking that last one. That's awesome. Okay, so let's put this cover on. Put this back here. Oh, Laura can see the difference, okay. I personally would probably pick the um, Blackberry Bliss. So with that being said, I may just update the blend list on the PDF for you guys that got the class and then you guys can figure out what you like better. All right, so this one is the one we talked, somebody asked earlier, I can't remember who was that asked, how does the fold work? I think you asked really early on. I said, oh, we'll get to it. <laughs> so very easy, you guys. It just makes it so much more fun. All right, so this is the card that has that diamond da die cut. It's so cool. That die cut cuts it out just like this, okay? So in seeing that, let's just show you how that looks. Isn't that cool? So <laughs> my favorite die in here um, is why I bought the kit and the stamp say, yes, so pretty. Um, all right, so that die cut is super cool. All right, so we already cut our designer paper. 
They weren't the same size. This one is the one for the outside of the card. And then you cut this one for the inside of the card. And well, let's put that guy up here. Your white for the inside would be the same size as your designer paper. In your kit, this one is another one of those tags from the Stylish Shapes. It's another banner size. You have your balmy blue sprig and you have a rose gold sprig. Okay, so those are already die cut for you in your kits. And then we talked about this, that at some point you need to fussy cut this. This is from that first chunk of designer paper that we worked with. And that is your flower that goes right there. So let's get some stuff glued because I'm gonna show you how this goes together. It's actually really simple. Um, the base is your traditional eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then your old olive piece is eight by five and a quarter scored at four, which is the center of eight, okay? So burnish that as well. Rose gold, I know, Lynn, the rose gold. You guys are gonna get your share of the rose gold. Um, I have you guys, the next uh, sweet class that's coming up is called Abigail Rose. And we're talking about rose gold. So there's rose gold here. There's rose gold here, and then there's, oh, silver on this one. But you guys, this is the Abigail Rose class that's coming up that I have that later in the month. Yeah, so that one I'm still taking registrations for. This one, as long as I have these in my hands, this is what we're doing Thursday night, you guys. Um, Fun Folds class on Thursday. I think I have a few more spots left for this too. So this is a cool card that I case from Randy Schultz. It opens this way and then opens that way. So it goes like this and a little bit like that. So there's that one. This one's a fun fold where that pops up. So you can see it has that popping mechanism. And then this one is a little bit of a fold going this way. Just to give you a little teaser what we're going to do on Thursday. So there's that. Okay, so that's the catalog launch party class, a.k.a. fun folds, a.k.a. celebration <laughs> launch class. Um, all right, so there's that. Let's put them back. Okay. So back to this guy, you guys. Sorry, I got diced. I was like a squirrel there, distracted. So this is super easy. All you're doing is gluing this. All you're going to do is glue it like this, and then it opens like that. So we can get really glue happy here. So what we can do is flip that over, and we're going to put a little bit. <laughs> so Lynn, your comment totally distracted me with rose gold. I'm like, yeah, rose gold is so awesome. <laughs> See how I can divert so easily. All right, so this is going to go on here. So centered, right? Just like that. And we can already glue this, and we might as well glue this. So let's get a little bit glue happy. So we'll put that one on, and we'll put that one on. So let's move this there. Make sure your flowers are going the right way, and that will go on this inside card. So it's like a card inside of a card. Lynn, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> Never apologize. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. I, it, hey, it's my, I look at it as I got distracted. I got to share cards with you for upcoming classes. And I don't think anybody dislikes seeing what's coming up in my mind because then you can figure out, well, I want to do that class or I don't want to do that class. So, all right. So no worries, Lynn. All good, girl. All right. So that's what we got going on, you guys. And then this one. If you choose to Stella this, I would Stella it now maybe um, because it only, if you Stella it, well, once it's glued on here, you're going to hit the pink and you might not notice that so much, but I am going to just Stella over this over a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to try to just go in the area where you're going to see it, right? So that corner, maybe down the side here like this and then a little bit down this area. Marsha said, you guys stop showing these card classes. You know what, you guys? Oh, card classes just keep coming. <laughs> oh, we learn a lot and we have a lot of fun stamping, you guys. If you're new to me, it's just lots of card classes every Thursday and then most Mondays, it seems. And then throw in a tip Tuesday and a technique Thursday and we stamp all month long, you guys. All right, so I did that first. Now what you're going to do is this is just going to get simply glued on here. So as long as you centered your pink one really nicely, now what you're going to do is just set this on here after you put glue on it. Um, 
it should be the outer area should be the five and a quarter by four and you just have to be very careful gluing this oh um you don't need to have glue everywhere but i'm gonna try to concentrate on my outer perimeter a little bit and i'm holding onto the grid area on the inside do not use a lot of glue if you have those adhesive sheets you know that would be cool but i feel like you're gonna waste a lot um oh it's the lattice the lattice die yes i was calling it the diamond die cut thing yes it's like a lattice okay so i've kind of put glue a little bit around the edges now i'm just gonna strategically go every other maybe and just wiggle around and get some different areas once we start gluing the other stuff over the top it's gonna hold it even more okay but the trick is you don't want to be smearing this all around <laughs> You're like, easier said than done. So I grabbed it in a spot that didn't have glue. I'm going to start in my top left corner, get it set. And I am eyeballing the left, the top, and the bottom. And now when I set that down, fingers crossed, it should just go right where I want it. And not smearing it all over the place. I did notice that um, you can always use the waist diamonds on another card. Correct. Exactly. Yes, definitely. Um, so they'd all be adhesive-y. Um, it's just, it's a lot of adhesive if you're making lots of these cards. But if you're making one, yeah, what, go for it. I am over on one side to the other, but you can't even, you can't really tell that. <laughs> so, all right. So there's that. All right. Let's do a little stamping. On this one, on the inside, I did that little spriggy thing, the baby's breath and blushing bride. Oh, remember it was really dark for me, you guys. So we're going to be super duper careful and we are going to... I do, but I'm in the hospital. I love the fun fold. Oh, got it, Marsha. Okay, so we're gonna stamp off and I'm gonna be careful not to stamp on top of my green because my green will pick up. So I'm actually gonna grab a different piece. When you stamp off onto a color, it has a tendency to pick up that color and I don't wanna pick up that color. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna do this in the bottom. That's plenty dark for me. And then, this has, you are a true friend. So that is in Mary Merlot, oh, 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 oh. And <laughs> oh, those who attended the Summer Creative Escape know the rest of that song <laughs> at this point. Um, in person, I should say. I sang a lot. All right, so we're going to test that out. Oh, it's a little bit crooked. But you guys, I'm going to do my trickery with stamping on the back first. And then see how I do. Oh, it's really crooked. I, I gotta make up for it. So I gotta go clockwise until the, okay, we're gonna try it again. And I'm gonna hold the stamp a little bit more to the left and a little bit more clockwise. Oh, yay. Okay, that's why I practiced on the back first. It's one thing to practice here, but when you practice on the back of the actual thing you're stamping on, usually you get a little bit more practice. All right. So, oh, Marsha Coolabert, you're so sweet. Offering to send a happy card. I love it, you guys. That's awesome. All right. That's it for the stamping because, you guys, this is already the way it needs to be. All right. So, ribbon first. Um, hi, Sue Thomas. And a little bit of tear and tape, you guys. And... The yellow flowers to the top and one is to the five o'clock. And so we're going to put a little bit of tear and tape here. Um, yeah, Deb, I am loving it too. The, the, you guys know I love this card so much, the layout. I did it two more times for upcoming classes. Oh, I did it for the Summer Creative Escape. That's what I did. So you guys could, in the Summer Creative Escape, you got a couple cards like that. I'm going to grab a couple more pieces of tear and tape just to have them ready for me here so I don't have to rip them off and hold. So this ribbon is loop-de-loop -loop and tail. So loop-de-loop -loop and tail and a loop-de-loop -loop and a tail. So how do you do that? So I put my tear and tape down there, and this is the bottom. So I've got my stem or the like tail coming out like that, and then I made a loop like this. Okay, I need a little bit of ribbon here. So a loop like this. Now, that's why I wanted to have another piece of tear and tape here so I could put it right over the top. All right, 
and either I can just bring it back right away, but that's gonna help me hold it. And now I'm gonna bring it back and make my other loop over here. Kind of like coming out right next to that leaf. So I got my other loop, loop there. And then my other tail comes right out the middle like that. And that's why I've got, thanks for sharing Jean Maxwell. Um, got that here, yeah. Speedy recovery to you, Marsha Long. So that's like that. And now grab, I'm gonna cut it a little long just in case I don't know what I wanna do with it to how I wanna do my tail. So that's basically what I've got for my ribbon on this card. I loved that. <laughs> All right, so everything else around the edges has popped up, but I have these flowers um, flat actually. So let me show you how I did that. So let's grab these hiding dimensionals. They always are hiding on me. So we're gonna do dimensionals around the edges. Oops, let's put this one ah right here. And we're gonna put one right there. So let's get these picked off and let's Stella, Ella Ella, our balmy blue. You don't have to Stella the rose gold. That's already super cool the way it is because it's all shimmery. But this balmy blue one was already die cut for you along with the rose gold. And this little area right here, I put extra dimensionals because I have got this balmy blue it's kind of coming up the edge like that. And then the rose gold one is also tucked in here. It might be easier to do this now while they are not put down flat. I want you to come back, stick you right, right in here. Ah, I want you over farther. Un momento, hang on. Oh, we're gonna lose this guy, but that's okay. So I want it to come out right about there. Okay, so I've got the blue one a little taller and I've got the rose gold one here. Now this one is kind of just hanging loose. I'm gonna put a little dimensional right at the top of that balmy blue one and that'll help hold that more. And let's see here, these are picked off. And then what I did is a little bit of liquid glue right in this middle area. So got double adhesive going on again. So it's kind of, popped up along the edges and then flat in the middle. And this kind of just goes on the edge over here. Lots of new ribbon ideas, how, how to remember them. So Linda, I actually did um, a tip Tuesday on ribbons alone. And I think we had about 20 different things to do with ribbons <laughs> that I showed because I had all the cards for that month all had different ways of doing ribbon. And so I did a tip Tuesday on different ribbons. And then this, you guys, because this is flat right here, now that is gonna get popped up. And because I didn't pop that middle area, I don't have to worry about it. And I, put, if you can see, I pulled up that little blue area. So it's going right over the top of that. So it kind of gives you a little extra blue on that label like that. Yay, it's so pretty. Okay, then my tails are kind of going all over the place. Like they're not, but they are, but they're, they need a little help. So I'm going to grab a glue dot and I'm gonna set it underneath one of them here, one of my tails, so it catches it and that helped. All right, and the other thing is that little guy is a little bit too loosey for me. So we're gonna do another small dimensional and we're going to put that underneath that designer paper. Let's make sure it's on all the way. And there. So, and then it went on crooked. Let's get you right there. All right, so that's gonna stick right there. Now, trimming the ribbon. So we're just gonna give that one a little angle. And I wanna use the scissors. My I'm gonna use my paper scissors for it a little sharper and then this one we're gonna give him a little hair job a little cut haircut and okay we're not done though like that's just pretty in and of itself but when you add these iridescent pearls it takes it over the edge and I did these all in white so now I have a large one here 
and then a small one next to it down here. And then there's a big one and a small one kind of tucked. It's hard to see them, but they're tucked in over here. So depending on how that turned out, you might put it there and then a small one here, kind of tucked in there. And then I've got three up there. I've got this bigger one in the middle. I found this where they meet to do that one. And then this other one was kind of down here. Oh, it's the gourmet. Now, the Stella action, Stella Ella, you could just go right over all of that designer paper because that's what it is. It's designer paper. And it's it, it won't bleed or blend at all after you color it so all right you guys so um the other thing too sometimes what you could do i forgot to do it before stamping but you could take your stella pen and go all over the white label and then stamp um if you forget to do that you can always just add a little bit of stella around the edges of your label if you get the words just know it will bleed <laughs> on you okay and i think that completes let's get these put away the last card and we'll move this and we'll bring them back all in so you guys can see what we got going on so that one is our gourmet fun amazing fold oh we didn't glue the inside in hang on can't forget that Un momento. put that right here should fit really nice all right then i think we got this guy done so penny powell will be proud we're gonna rip that off and put them in their home <laughs> all right that's our beautiful card um unfortunately you only have one piece that looks like that because of how that designer series paper came I was able to get it so that everybody gets one of those. <laughs> the rest of them, because you got a six by six piece, they get cut. So let me show you again. You'll have pieces, but not a full one. So you'll have edgings. Where are you? Mm -hmm. This, you guys will have sections, but not another full one. But you should have, everybody has the ability to do this card with that one piece. So let's bring them in and show you what we all made tonight. <laughs> I like to clean up my mess though so that, the, the I call this the glamour shot, you guys, where I bring all the cards in and I can save that as the um, cover photo or however you want to call it, the photo for the class all right so for the video so there's that we have another one that goes so this is what i've got you guys a lot of mary merlot tonight um if you weren't a fan of mary merlot you probably were not so excited about this class <laughs> but mary merlot with blushing bride mary merlot with mossy meadow mary merlot with balmy blue and then mary merlot with the mixture of all of them so um I tried to make these cards all cohesive for you uh, just to show you how well these colors go together. So I um, always ask, what's your favorite? I don't know if anybody has a favorite. Um, the lattice is over the top, Donna says. Yeah, I'd have to say that is my favorite too. I love the first one you made the best. Cindy Runtree says she likes one is the first one yeah i love this layout it's very easy to reproduce this kind of layout very fun using up some strips adding color so oh you guys i'm always sad when a class is done that i love looking at the cards because these cards have been up on display um here in the hive and i get to look at them as i walk by and i just am sad when they go and i don't have the cards to replace these yet but i showed this on my showcase last week um I don't have the next, and normally I do by now. I normally have the next ink, paper, scissors ready to go, but I don't. And I just, I didn't have time today to get it, to pull it together. <laughs> I really didn't. Um, I thought, oh, in the morning I'll check emails, in the afternoon I'll um, design cards, and then, oh yeah, I have to prep for tomorrow. It just never happens that everything gets done <laughs> at the same time, or when I want it to. So, but just to show you what's coming up for next month, it's gonna feature lovely and lasting, this bundle. Um, 
And because there's a lot of focals, there's a lot of sentiments. And so, um, the, and I always pull cards together. So I swap with others to get ideas. Um, I know that I haven't picked the ribbon yet, but I'm thinking it's going to be this ribbon here. And the gems I'm going to use are, there's some gems that um, match all of the colors very nicely. And just not that these are the cards that I'm going to make. I'm going to be taking ideas and elements from them. So like Sarah Simon made some really pretty cards. And so I'll take this upstairs and I'll have this layout and I might be like, oh my gosh, I love the layout, but I might change the colors or I might change um, the layout just a little bit, or I might change it all up. But I start with an inspiration. And just to show you some samples of cards using this suite of products, like another one by Sarah, that mosaic folder will definitely get used in this because that's part of this suite. So just to kind of give you guys a heads up, like, and then there's the pale papaya is in here too. So the color palette is going to be along these lines. Like this is another one that Sarah made. Um, this was one Kathy Miller made. And I just love the layout of this. And I thought, well, could I tweak and take two cards and make them one and change it up? So I love that layout. I thought this was a nice, easy layout. But um, definitely one of the ones that I said is I'm going to do a card where it has the designer paper like that. And then definitely pulling in that focal image to be in the middle area. So... Here's another one that features the designer paper that Jay Shante made. So just wanted to, and that was another Kathy Miller. So now that I'm going to, I don't copy cards exactly, right? I take ideas and elements from them, but just to see um, if this is something that's up your style, you could already get signed up for it by letting me know. Um, and then when it comes time and the cards are actually made, you might be like, nope, take my name off the list. But if it's still something you want, you can be like, yep, keep it on. I'll send you money. So easy going on that one. Um, so that's that class. And that one's, you guys, later. Oh, guess what? It's August 1st today. I can flip my calendar. That class. Oh, here's another one, you guys. Because I go to backstage um, for Stampin' Up! the 25th through the 29th. Um, that class is actually an August Ink, Paper, Scissors, but I'm doing it. The same thing happened this month, right? So I'm doing it September 1st, right? Because I come home and then I'm going to do it on September 1st. Um, so Kelly's going to be doing Paper Pumpkin on the um, 25th for me again. So it's like the same kind of setup. Okay. So, um, so that's the ink, paper, scissors. Um, just to remind you guys too, what my mom and I, before I um, do the drawings and stuff like that, I'm going to tell you what we have coming up really quick too, in case anybody wants to get signed up for classes. Tomorrow we're kidding up the monthly class, which we'll be making these three cards. Um, it's free with an order or it's a minimum amount of $20 for mailing, 15 for porch pickup. Otherwise free with a $45 order. Um, today is my brother's 60th birthday. Awesome. Happy 60th birthday to him. Um, you guys just need a sentiment here, a sentiment here, and some sort of critter action here with a sentiment. So that's the monthly and I have some left for that. And then let's, so this class is next Thursday. Oh, actually it's the 11th. Oh yeah, next Thursday, the 11th. Um, Monday, you guys, is Let's Just Stamp featuring the um, geranium. So we're kidding this up tomorrow. Uh, these classes will be going out in the mail for those that registered as of tonight. <laughs> um, so this is the potted geraniums. Again, we use that um, a wash in beauty designer paper on all three of these cards. So that one's next week, Monday. And then we already showed you what's coming up. Um, this Thursday is the Fun Folds class. And I believe I still have some available for that. Um, all right, so what do we have here? We're going to do, all right, I have these three cards to give away from last week. So we'll do that. And I do, <laughs> I went old school with paper and a pen. I wrote down all the names for the class card challenge and the monthly creative challenge for those people that submitted. So we'll do a random number generator for that. And we're also going to do random number generator for um, these people. So, but guess what, you guys? Hold up. We can add some people to this. So I think Marsha Long, you were first. And then Sarah Merchant, you will be number 50. Oh, Latokia, you probably should have been in there first. Um, but we'll give you 51. Latokia. And then Sharon Davis will be 52. So... As long as I don't miss anybody, I still have, I believe, four more left at some point. Um, uh, if you guys, my email will go out midweek, and I'll always tell you in there if I have any left at that email. 
um, but looks like I have a few left at this moment. Um, oh, happy birthday to your, your dad in heaven. 91. Wow. Yeah, we miss those that go before us. We sure do. Um, I, I don't even know my grandpa Haas would be like 120 or 115 at this point. He passed away 20 years ago, 2002. Um, 20 years ago, my grandpa has been gone. And Grandpa Bertram was 2000, I think. So, yeah, it's crazy how that time goes by. And we keep living, don't we? Um, we can't because they'd want us to keep living. So that's what we do. Um, all right. So, you guys, drum roll. Da -da -da. Okay, this was the monthly class. We did this a couple weeks ago. So winner, winner, chicken dinner, the brewery beer card, wine card goes to Miss Deb Norman. Woohoo, Deb. Um, eventually, soon, I will get this card in the mail for you. Um, I will know it won't be in the next day or two, but I have it set aside and you'll get it. Don't worry. Um, da -da -da -da, drum roll. Our little shaker card with the frosted beads goes to Barb Barka. Woohoo, Barb. You win that one. And then this one with the um, sending smiles goes to Debbie. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I know how to say this, but your name was the one that got picked here. Guti Rare. Oh man, you're going to have to tell me somehow. It's G U T I E R R E Z. Gutier, maybe? Like if the Z is silent. <laughs> so, Debbie, if you're watching, I need your address. Okay. So you could email it to me. Um, here, you could text it to me, however you want. But Debbie, or if anybody knows Debbie, I need her address. But I definitely have Barb's and I have Deb Norman. So that's exciting. So congratulations to you three lucky ladies. All right, so the monthly creative challenge. So every month I have a challenge and um, I have to let the July one go and I will pin the August one up to the top of my newsfeed so you can find it easily. Um, I have to do that yet. Um, but there's a challenge every month and it's like different themes and using at least one stamp and a stamp that's current and sharing your cards. And then what I do is I pull your names and I give away a door prize um, from my vault of um, product <laughs> that I have. And so I'm just pulling up random number generator and we will see here. I had nine people that submitted cards for the month of July. And so we're going to put nine in here and we're going to hit generate and see what comes up. Oh, two, Carla Lake. Okay, Carla, you are the lucky winner. So you have some cards going out this week, a, a class. So I'll be able to put your prize in with that class card challenge. How does the class card challenge work? So every month, I love to see that you guys are making the cards that you get kits from me for online classes. And so it's always the current month and the previous month. So for July's, it was June and July. So now that August is here, you can submit your cards from July and August that you put together of classes that you paid for from me, like to get the kits. And so we had 13 people that shared pictures. So... Nothing makes me happier than seeing cards that you guys put together for all the time and um, cutting and kidding and die cutting and embossing that we do putting card gets together and to have them sit on your floor somewhere or get dust or collect dust and they not get put together makes me sad to think about that. So I have a little incentive or challenge for people who get card kits. Something just fell. I saw that. Um, so I have an incentive or challenge to um, have you guys make your cost card. So I give away a prize to somebody who shares their cards on that post. So, all right. So we're going to flip back down. And I said I had 13 people. Oh, I lied. Um, 12, 13, 14. Deanne is number 15. Okay. So I had 15 people. Glad I caught that. So for number 15, we're going to hit generate number five. All right, Hildenel, you are the lucky winner of the class card challenge. So we had Hildenel. We had Carla Lake. All right. So the other thing that we're going to do is, as long as we've got the random gem number generator going on, we had 52 people that had class with me, and I like to give away a door prize to somebody who got the class with me. And so I think I'll actually even do two um, for this. Now, my rule that I usually do is to share the love. Um, we already had Carla win, and we had Hilda now win. So if for some reason they get their names picked again, I draw somebody else because I like to give away as many prizes in a night and not have to go to multiple people. Not that, you know, I don't like to give the same person a prize twice. I think that I love to share the love of prizes more. So if for any chance 
um, Hildenel or Carla get called, um, I will pick somebody else. But I don't do that with the cards. Like the cards are a different thing. So just kind of put that out there in case they get picked. Uh, I'll be like, oh man, they won already. Okay, so I'm going to put 52 in and we're going to pick two people, you guys. So let's put 52 and hit generate. Number 26 is Laura Sullivan. Woohoo! Okay, congratulations, Laura. And then 23. See, this just happened. Oh my goodness, Hildenel. I'm so sorry. You already won a prize. I didn't know that was going to happen, but hey, that happened. So Hildenel already won something for tonight. So we're going to hit generate again and give somebody else a chance. Number five, Mary Carls. All right, Mary. So you will get a prize and Laura will get a prize. Hildy will get a prize and Carla Lake. Now, I also do something with my Be Happy Stampers when I can. Um, we did a July challenge, and the July challenge was to share cards um, using new celebration product. Um, I believe that's what it was, or maybe it was holiday mini catalog product. It was share a card using current new product out of, I think, celebration products. Okay. All right. Thanks, Hilda Nell. Um, so I had four people. So we had Anne, Anna, Deb, and Bonnie from the Be Happy Stampers that are all in on this drawing. So we'll flip it back down and we're going to put four in here and one of them will win a prize. So generate number three, Deb Norman, you win the Be Happy Stampers team challenge. Woohoo. All right. So your next card kit package going out, I will also include a little prize for you. Oh, you guys, we're not done yet. We also have the celebration board number five drawing. And <laughs> my post-it notes suck. I will tell you, whatever they did to these post-it notes, they did not make them very sticky. And I've been using liquid glue to hold them up. And that's what you get these days. They change something and they're not as good. That's always what happens, I think. So that's just me on my um, drama train there, sobs a story about my post-it notes. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> I think you can relate when it happens to you, though. Um, so if you spend $50 with me for every $50, so if you spend 60, it's only one. If you spend 60 and then 40, it's still one. But if you spend 100 in one order, it's per order. You get your name on the board for every $50. So um, I went through today and I tracked everybody who's placed orders recently. So I know I got um, like Barbarco, I got you on there. Tracy Saylor, I got you on there. Lori Ransom, um, number 15 fell off too here I see. So we're gonna glue that one so that we can see it. Um, I believe Carmen Melendez, you were on there as well. I have, I, I saw an order coming over the weekend. So I tried to get everybody, let's get that bag on here. Um, Sherry Martin, you're another one. I made sure that if you ordered up until today, I got yours on there and it got full. Holy Moses and a half. Okay, so <laughs> we get to do a drawing, you guys. Number five for the board here. So I actually have 25 little slips of paper here, you guys. <laughs> and this is how I do this drawing and I've done it this way for probably four years. So, da -da -da, you gotta do drum roll, you guys. Da -da -da. All right, winner, 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 chicken dinner is this one right here. Let's see who it is. Let's see who it is. Number five. Okay. Who's number five? Barb Kroll. Okay. Barb was at class last week, um, Wednesday night, and she was, not to tell her story, but she was at $78 or $77, and she decided to do an extra $22 to get $100, right, to get up to the celebration. I'm Number five was her second number that she picked after she decided to increase her order. So Barb, you're going to be so happy that you added that. I mean, to add $23 to her order, she got a free celebration item, a second one, and now she gets a $25 gift certificate. Yay! Sometimes it works out that way for you. Okay. Barbara Barco is watching. Hey, Barbara. Um, okay. Board five with a month to go. Yeah, you guys, get that. All that, like, yeah, we're... Ugh. I don't want to say that I'm going to get five more bar boards filled, but I would bet that there'll be at least three more boards. So um, just know for every 25 squares that get filled um, that I do the drawing. And you don't have to be present for me to put your name on the board. I include every online order that I get 
um, from people and I put their name on the board, I will just randomly pick their number for them. And if you're in person, you get to pick your number. That's like the main difference on that. So, okay. Well, let me look at my laundry list of things, you guys. Oh, Top Fan. <laughs> I almost forgot Top Fan. Okay. So Top Fan is stupid. Um, how they have, Facebook has changed it since April. Um, it's not that I can just grab a list of people and be like, okay, there's 60 people for top fan. Let's do a random number generator. I have no way to access it from my laptop and copy and paste it like I used to. The only way I can do this now is by going on my cell phone and finding somebody who is a top fan, clicking on their little thing that says top fan, and then I scroll through it and I shut my eyes and I stop and I put my finger down and whosever name is under there is the winner. And so that's how strategic I have to be with that. I mean, I wish I could do a random number generator, but um, Deb, I know you sent me a message about getting your top fan back. I have no idea how to do it otherwise. Um, so like, to be a top fan, it's commenting, liking, sharing stuff on my Facebook page business page, which is where we are right now. And Deb Norman, for some reason, has no idea how she had it at one point, law, it went away and then had it and now it's gone away. And um, and she comments and shares and likes everything. So I can't explain how that happens, but um, if, until I can get a way back to grab everybody's names, put them into an, a, like a file and then print it and do the random gem number generator, I don't know what to do. But um, so, but I do have four people that were randomly picked to be top fan prize winners and they are Lori Ransom, uh, Linda Grady, uh, Dawn Funk and Feline Mays. Woohoo to those lucky ladies. So, um, congratulations to those four. So, um, hi Mary Jean Kiepert. I'm glad you're here. We're almost done though right now. So I don't know when your comment came through, if it just came through now, but, um, yeah. So again, top fans for July were Lori Ransom, Linda Grady, Don Funk, and Feline Mays. I will have prizes for them as well. Whew. Okay. So now I need to look at my laundry list of stuff. We did top fan. We did the class card challenge, monthly creative challenge, the be happy stampers drawing, the celebration board drawing, and the class card. So you guys, we got through everything. Um, I will be grading the scavenger hunts um, over the course of this week. Uh, again, if you join late, I listed off everybody who turned in their scavenger hunts that I have. Um, if you didn't hear your name called, please reach out to me. Um, unloaded the first load of the craft stuff into my new apartment. Oh, Chris is in the process of moving. She got her apartment today. Yay. So exciting. That's awesome, Carissa. Um, so if you, Deanne, you're watching now. Deanne, I didn't get your scavenger hunt in. Earlier on, I said, you just got to go with whatever you think it is for snowflakes or stars. I can't remember whatever you had a question about. Just go with whatever you think they are. <laughs> Most likely, everybody will have different numbers for that question. And either everybody will have it wrong or one person might have it right. And I won't know until I look at it and I didn't have a chance to look at the stamps in the set that you were asking about. So I would say go for it and get it turned in like now because I didn't see it come through. Okay, um, scavenger hunts, then I'll announce the winner for them on, on Thursday. My plan is then also to publish the August newsletter by Thursday or Friday, you guys. So you can watch for that later in the week. And I'll be live for a tip Tuesday at some point tomorrow is my plan. And... Wednesday's in-person catalog launch party, and then it's um, uh, Facebook Live on Friday, uh, Thursday night, and then Craft Roulette is Friday night. Whew. Okay, so <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday's in um, the launch party again in person. So, oh, another, oh, you mailed it. Oh, ah, I got mail, you guys. <laughs> ha ha. Deanna Estelle, I bet this is it. Okay, good job, girl. Um, that reminds me then, Sandy, let's see what Sandy sent me, if that's a scavenger hunt. Ha, ah, Sandy, this was fun, not sure on a couple of them. Okay, Sandy, I got your scavenger hunt too then. Okay, you guys, literally, I got all, I gotta go through all my mail yet. I haven't done that yet, but this is my happy mail here. <laughs> so, um, if anybody else turned in a scavenger hunt, um, and it's in the stack of mail. Just know I will get to it um, tonight. <laughs> That's my plan. So I didn't know. Okay, I'm glad you told me that. It's right here. So Deanne, I have it. All right, I don't know if there's anybody else, but Sandy and Deanne, I have your scavenger hunts as well. So I get to look through my happy mail now. You guys, 
<laughs> I didn't have a second to sit down and look at the mail yet. <laughs> so, all right, congratulations to all the winners, you guys. We had a great night here doing ink, paper, scissors. I'm so happy, you guys. We had over 100 people that were tuning in for the bulk of the class, which was amazing. I think we had that on Thursday night too. So that's so exciting to have all you guys with me for class. Um, just know this replay is always available in the video section of my Cards by Christine Facebook page or in YouTube. And I always publish it to YouTube um, a few days later, within a day or two or three later. So um, just you can always watch for it in either location. Um, if you want to, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I think it's just Cards by Christine. Um, but otherwise, the Facebook page is Cards by Christine. So, all right. I hope you have a great evening to Latokia and everybody else. Enjoy the rest of your Monday night. Uh, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to everybody. Um, even if I only watch. Oh, yeah, Donna. That's what it's all about. Have fun, right? <laughs> um, all right, you guys. We'll see you later. Love you. Bye.